just didn't animate when I stepped on it. Fine. Watch out for this conveyor belt. Oh, Mirabelle's not on a tactic. Get a Mirabelle. It went a lot better in my head where she cast boom instead of attacking. Yeah, like that. I'll do that next time. Turtle Vader? <laughs> that emote is very relevant. There's buttons that turn that fire off, but it doesn't deal that much damage, so whatever. Just walk through it. You know what else I'm gonna walk through? This wall. If that's okay with you. Yeah, I guess pushing that rock just turns off your collision and you can just walk... Well, you can't just walk through a wall, but... If you're half on the wall, half on the rock, you clip into the wall. Dungeon on 3DS. It's been a long time since I've seen the 3DS version. I played it casually right when it came out. And, you know, understandably, I've seen very few speedruns of it. Step on the button. We're gonna get a fight because of that, I just know it. Yeah, the 3DS speedrun is longer and slower than this. There's a couple of reasons for that. Because, like, they made the overworld a lot bigger. It's a full 3D environment instead of just being a, you know, map. Um. Oh, Maribel. You got such a wizard ring you cast outside, and you broke it. You broke it, Maribel. Maribel, you broke the wizard ring casting outside. Why didn't you just use a potion? Anyway. This is what I'm supposed to be walking, right? Yeah. Um. Do I go in here, or do I just... Oh, no, I go to the back house. Okay. Uh, 3DS version also lags a lot, um, battles are a lot slower, 
Because you've got to watch your character run up, do the attack, run back, instead of it just animating. And you probably get into more battles with the different with the monsters on the map battle system. And everything. Yeah. Nope, nope, dig site. Uh, rather than this purely random, well, not purely random, but the depletion system. Sail. Sail south. <clears throat> that. And it's sailing around it. Yeah, I was talking about this earlier, but there's just a lot of maps in the 3DS version where, uh, you know, they're copies of what the map was on PS1, but they put gigantic monsters in the rooms that you can't walk around. So. Also, the, uh, you see the skulls back. There's actually a fake skull in there now. And now the guy is charging 10 gold to see it, not 5, now that it's fake. <laughs> if you inspect it, you can see the paint's flaking off on it. Where's the chest? There it is. Alright. Boop, boop, boop. Real quick, we have to double dip into Dune. <clears throat> this is the one that I was talking about. I don't know what trigger you have to hit before coming back in here. See, that's not gonna run faster than you. That's the case with some enemies in uh, the DQ games that do that. Some of them run faster than you, some of them run in straight lines, some of them home in on you. Uh, oh nice, went straight down the stairs. I think there's a tidy here that I need to do. Yeah. Something else I didn't mention, the, um, I believe it's in the present when you go to Dune, when you step in the castle and they throw a feast for you, um, the queen gives you one of the eyeballs from the evil statue. And, uh, we didn't do that, but in a few hours when we get to disc two, you'll see that it magics its way into my pocket. Talked to the chieftain here, and we're like, hey, can we stay the night? And she's like, yeah. 
Yes, the PS1 does have the Immigrant Town. We don't do anything with it in a speed run, but that was the island early on that had the big rock in it. If I were to have talked to the guy, I kind of mentioned this, but if I were to talk to the guy that's in that area, then random NPCs start spawning in specific places and you can recruit them to your town and it grows and you can get some extra tiny metals doing that. It's got a couple of different final forms based on the specific people you recruit. Which is the Grand Slum with the Big Casino. And then the remakes of DQ4 actually have a very similar mechanic in them too. It's a little watered down though, it's not quite as interesting. So they built like three towns in this game just to set up the end of this chapter. <laughs> the first town and this town. They only exist so that you can show up and then this guy plays some music and everybody disappears. There's nothing else to do in these towns. I'm not sure either of them even exist in the present. Maybe they do. <clears throat> Oops. Go in here real quick. I think it's the middle one. Okay. Good. So on this one, we're actually going to do something before everyone gets disappeared in it. Buy Gabo a weapon. Oops. <clears throat> Officially done with the blade boomerang. Here still has his. I should get rid of it too. It's in here. Wink. Um. We evade shirts. Picked up that silver shirt and. Didn't even attempt to use him. Fire claw. Ammo, do not equip it. The fire claw, when you use it in battle, casts Blazemore. And that is Gabo's main source of damage for quite a while. We sell it very near the end of the game, but up until that point, Gabo has an option of using it in battle. And walks off, he says, Hey, I feel so happy, I'm gonna give everybody a discount at the end. We go in here and we talk to him. We like to say, I'm so happy today, I'll let you stay for free. Uh, I mean, for half price. He's starting to come to his senses. We wake up in the middle of the night. For some reason, this magical spell doesn't work on us, but we catch that old man playing music. Basically, entrancing the whole town and getting them to jump into this portal. And we'll go off and uh, find them and figure out what's going on here. Yeah, the immigrant town, it's kind of annoying getting all of its final forms because the spawns are random. I don't know if the location you're looking at affects or influences which people spawn, but you basically 
find somewhere that immigrants spawn and then go upstairs and then downstairs and then upstairs and then downstairs until it's the person you want. And for some of the towns, you have to just completely replace everybody who's in the town to get a different final form. Like there's one form that I think your most of your town has to be women. There's one where it has to be mostly like criminals and sailors and uh, bartenders, people like that. Rare slime metal, not very rare in this game. <laughs> Most of the encounters you find in this tower are slime level 8, which are the slimes that will call for help and then turn into king slimes. Doesn't one of these have like a seed in it? No. Okay, cool. All right, let's corner this bard, figure out why he's kidnapped everyone, and put him into this tower. He seems to recognize us when he sees us. It's very strongly implied that this bard is, um... Not Joanne. Jan, from, uh, the Dave Deja Past. Which is why he recognizes us. Now, does he straight up say? I know he mentions, like, very specifically that he comes from a tribe and such like that. Like, it's obvious that he actually is Jan. I don't know if he refers to himself by name, but. Regardless, it turns out that he was actually whisking everyone away to save them from this flood. I don't know if he mentions how he knew there was going to be a flood, but... He does some weird things with that Tula. Kiefer, yeah, or even just like a middle-aged Kiefer with a full beard jumping out, fire slashing for 120 damage. I want that arc. Alright. Future spinoff, we get Gruff Keeper, Kiefer, maybe. Like Caravan Heart 2. <laughs> There's another game that we never got. I haven't played Caravan Heart. I should someday. I don't know much about it. Yeah, some of the people, we kind of unsaved. We, uh... That's our bad. But we let them out when we climbed up the tower, and they escaped back to their towns. Which are now underwater. We can still go to them, though. Um, I know at least the second and third ones you can go to, and they have, like towers in the town that are still sticking out above the water. Because Gracchus flooded the continent, but he didn't do a very good job. It's only about 20 feet underwater. <clears throat> that? No. I wonder where my next break is. Hot, right? Found it. Then we 
me shove this out of the way. <clears throat> There's a very silly thing in this dungeon. There's a ghost somewhere. He might be in this room. You talk to him and he brags about his invention, about these flying pots, which are scattered all over this room here. Uh, where just, you can throw them. <laughs> kind of just a silly dungeon gimmick that they lampshade hang by having the inventor of these things haunting the room. So we need to raise and lower these platforms before we lower the water level so that we can get to a certain spot in the room. Oh, I need to close that one. Go away, evil turtle. I can just like no. <laughs> Need that one down. There are a couple of trick shots you can do in this room. There's only one that I'm gonna go for. Eh. I'm already past the other one. The button in the bottom right, you can hit from where the buttons are, but it doesn't really save time to do that. should stop using the heal all tactic. It's because they really prefer to use heal when they do that. Let me put this right away. Just go around. Death Crab B is watching.
Hopefully I hit all the switches I needed to hit. Quite a few that you need to hit after you cross their bridges. Okay. Evil Diver. Oh, they're not on tactics. XP. That's not terrible. Uh, the stairs are... Yeah, where I'm trying to get to. This room, pretty similar story. First of all, an encounter. Second of all, want this world leaf over here. And I think I need to lower this, right? Go this way. No. Wrong. Incorrect. Go oh, away, evil anchor. Don't you snowstorm me. Hit the button. Then we go over here and raise the water again, which will make those bridges float. The issue I have with this puzzle is it's very hard to see the whole thing. Maybe with the water lowered you could get to like the middle of the room and see everything from there. But I wish you could rotate the camera 360 in this room. Now oh, we all got put to sleep. That's fine. I might go for dying to the next fight rather than beating it. Um... I don't know. I don't know. Hey, Gracchus. So Gracchus thing is just that he's a grumpy fish dude. And, uh... That's it. That's, that's the end. He's got all these souls. He turns them into his fish babies. Oops, I have to like, turbo into that. Uh, they're barely hurting here, I guess I'll fight it. It doesn't matter if you beat this fight or if you die to it, they don't have much HP though. But if you were down a character or two, it can be good just to die to it. But sometimes they take forever to kill you, because you see they're casting Infernos and it's not dealing any damage to Gabo or Maribel. They're also casting Sleep. If they put you to sleep, you start taking half damage as if you're parrying every turn. But whether you win or lose, you get a full heal after the fight before Gracchus himself. Jin joins the party here. I don't think he even gets a party jingle. Nope, he doesn't. 
Um, Jan is going to carry this fight on his shoulders. As you will see, it all goes wrong, and then he picks us up with Life Song. What are you breathing Sandstorm for? What? That's a thing? Okay, well, it doesn't work on that attack. <laughs> ow. Also, ow. No, let's die for yourself. hurt. Just to reiterate about how it works having the bard in my party here. Um, So it always acts like the bard is the second character in my party. So there's a 40% chance here is going to get attacked. That's why I cast up on him a few times. 30% for bard. Uh, 20 for Gabo, 10 for Maribel. Maribel shouldn't get bullied too hard. But it's Dragon Quest, she probably will. He's being very nice right now, though. He hasn't used his breath attack yet. Also, generally only taking one action per turn. Like I said very early on, most of the bosses in this game randomly either one action or two actions per turn. And if they decide it's a two action per turn day, it's a lot more difficult than if it's a one action per turn day. with uh, all of the NPC members that I'm aware of has 65,535 HP. So technically he can die, but you're not gonna see it. Yeah, that was pretty free. Not a single breath attack. Breath attack does like 50 damage to everybody. He did do his beats down the party laughing attack pretty frequently, which is like 40 damage to everybody. But he can do that and the breath attack in the same turn and then everyone just kind of dies. <laughs> I don't think I've ever had a Krakos where nobody at all died. Usually I uh, get very careless and I'm parrying while I wait for the bard to vivify my party. Kind of like the bard joking there at the end about how, oh no, he destroyed the bridge, we're stuck, we can't possibly jump over that narrow gap over there. And then Bard's like, oh wait, my whole thing is that I have a spell that teleports people to this tower. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's a two byte HP value and he's just completely maxed out. 
That's why it's annoying when you see them heal themselves. Like, a lot of the early guests have heal, heal more, or herbs, and they'll cast it on themselves, and it's like, dude, you're missing 50 of your 65,000 HP, and I'm hidden, sitting here with 3 HP, and you healed yourself. <laughs> Alright, Bard's gonna throw us a wizard ring here. It's not a big deal at all that Maribel already broke one of my wizard rings. I get four of them in this run, and really, between now and Orgodemir, I very rarely touch them. Alright. Okay, we're gonna get an item in here, which I don't think I mentioned earlier. But this is the Merm Moon. Mermaid Moon. Um, it's a useful item for two reasons. First of all, it's a plot item. Um, the uh, maid who has the real magic carpet wants me to show it to her. But also, it is an item that can be used in battle to cure uh, confusion from one party member. Um, and I can use it as many times as needed. And that will probably save my life in the Orgodemir 2 fight. Because, yeah, the final boss of the game confuses you. It's great. Okay, I think we're done here. Let me get a fight walking around here. Apparently the giant flood didn't kill the monsters. You'd think it would kill the mud man, right? The rock would probably survive it. I can see that. The other chest is a Berserker Heart. I think there's something interesting that Berserker class learns, but if I remember right, it's not a great class overall. <clears throat> Oops, over here. West room. Northeast pedestal. Okay, so coming up is uh, the only major glitch in the game in about five minutes. Only major glitch that I'm using. Really the only thing that skips content in this run. Um, there's a glitch that skips about half of this chapter by talking to somebody you're not supposed to talk to at the time. Because <clears throat> the trigger for ending this chapter is to talk to a specific NPC on this screen, but he shows up here in a scene before you're supposed to talk to him to end the chapter, and he still sets the chapter as completed when you do that. We're gonna go into this town. This town's like under attack from another uh, human settlement, Ragaraz. I'm probably not going to dwell on the plot in this one much because if I don't screw up we're going to skip half of it. It's fine though, I have a setup that's impossible to screw up except the two times I've screwed it up. Before we get to that, let me go here. I 
9,500 gold. I'm finally selling the steel armor. I wonder if I could get two sets of this stuff. If I sold everything. I have so much money on me right now. <clears throat> this Gabo can equip the heavy armor as well. But I don't know, maybe it's still better for him to have the magical skirt than heavy armor. 4,005. Eh, six. It would be close. I could probably scrounge for it. But we're not gonna worry about it. Here's gonna take heavy armor. If you do not pick up the, uh, whatever it's called, I'm trying not to say armor of Orgo because that's DQ6. Uh, but whatever the armor is in Orgodomir's castle, that would make sense if it were the armor of Orgo, but it's not. Um, <laughs> if you don't pick that up for safety, this is the armor that Hero wears into the final battle. But I will be picking up the safety armor because it takes two minutes to grab and it's very nice to have. Oh, I missed it. Happy nine hours, everybody. We're halfway through. <laughs> I don't think I commented on that. I saw the timer when it was at 8.58, and I'm like, oh yeah, in two minutes I should say happy nine hours. But here we are, 9.26. Time flies when you're having fun. <laughs> We're on island 13 out of 18. Disc 2 is within our grasp. Yeah, this goddess statue is supposedly protecting this town. <laughs> and he's gonna go put an end to Ragaraz's imperial imperialist ways. Uh, let me just real quick. In theory, I don't have to come back up here. Wait, no, that's not true. I do come back one more time. God, this sucks. <laughs> you have to climb this uh, mountain three times to beat this island. Nobody can feel bad about using a little skippy glitch to skip one of those climbs. Gaiala armor, there you go. Is that actually the name of the DQ6 armor, Armor of Orgo? Because now I'm doubting it, now that there's Orgo Demir and Orgo armor. Obviously I'm asking about the Japanese slash fan translation name, not the DS name. Yeah, if we hold left we get out of town faster, right? Yeah. Okay, this is where we do the skip, right? This isn't it. This is it. Get as close to him as you can. There we go. Easy peasy. That saved us five minutes. And all we're really missing is walking up and down the mountain one time and fighting a boss twice. And the boss really isn't that interesting. It's another forced loss and then you fight him again. Argo is right. Okay. Maybe we should trade armors. Get the Orgo armor so we can fight Orgo. And then the Gaella armor to fight who cares. Who asked? Bonk. He breaks it. <clears throat> Yeah, he breaks the goddess statue because he thinks that's what these people are after. And then he's like, 
Oh, actually, we're monsters. Wow. I mean, the guy's name is Dragon Man. I don't care about skipping a boss named Dragon Man. Well, I guess this is Dragon Warrior. Maybe he's the Dragon Warrior. Maybe it wasn't me all along, it was him. Oh. I want to be the Dragon Warrior. We're skipping him. So now this is going on. I'm not going to help any of these people. I think you can. If you interact with the monster, you probably fight it. I don't know. It doesn't amount to anything. The whole town dies. But if you don't do the skip, they get better. So don't worry. Maybe they'll still get better. Maybe someone else will defeat the Dragon Man. Whatever, let's climb this mountain again. This dungeon and the lighthouse are the dungeons that I have the best movement in. Because you walk through them so many times. Twice up and down this dungeon if you do the skip. If you don't do the skip, it's twice up, three times down because you death warp to get back to the top. I know, you do it again in the present. Yeah. I'm going to go up and down this thing three times. Right. Get out of my way. And then the lighthouse you also do three times, but at least you only climb up. like that setup for Probina Skip that I came up with though. I used to watch High Spirits do runs of this and he'd be talking about how, oh, if I m mess this up I'm gonna lose seven minutes and it was like a frame perfect press that he had to do because he would just walk up to the guy and press the button. But I found out that if you just use the camera you can wiggle yourself a little bit closer without actually stepping into range of the cutscene trigger and talk to him from there. And then it was no longer timing based. You just have to make sure that you don't uh, walk too far. <laughs> and it's really forgiving too if you do exactly what I was doing. There's like, I think six positions when you're walking north before you move the camera that work. As long as the hero's head is overlapping the tree, or the, uh, or rather the tree trunk. Oh, I forgot the life dot. Oh well, I get it after this. This isn't a break, is it? I don't know, my notes for this are convoluted because they splice in what you need to do if you didn't do this, skip. This says scene dot dot dot. It doesn't tell me how long the scene is. Probably needs less than 60 seconds though. Priest locks us in the cellar so we don't all get killed by monsters. We could have taken them though. Especially since if you don't do the skip, you do take them. Unfortunately, you can't just cast outside or it takes you back to the top. 
the dead nun up there too, if you talk to her, you can save the game. I think she's got the Imperial Scrolls of Honor clutched in her cold dead fingers. take the quick way out of town we need the whole reason I didn't immediately walk out of town after doing the skip I'll walk back to the present is to pick up this treasure chest he's about to drop which is what he collected from the basement there's a key in there which I need and then there's a message in there that I don't need which is uh, it tells you how to fix the goddess statue which is how you finish this chapter normally you take this statue up to the top of the hill because you hadn't climbed the hill enough times yet. And then you throw it in that spring behind the shrine. Where I full healed earlier. And then the dragon man shows up and he fights you and you lose. And then he fights you again and you win. And then, uh, for whatever reason, after you kill the dragon man, all of the people's souls go back to their bodies. Great. Very cheesy ending. Okay, let's go get the magic carpet for real. <laughs> we're gonna go in here and we're gonna talk to the maid again. You tell her that he's sulking in the other room and then she admits the carpet is fake. Uh, I know where the real one is, but if you can bring me the Merm Moon, I'll decide that you're worthy to have it. And here it is. Ooh. So, <clears throat> she decides to let me keep the Merm Moon and still says she'll give me the carpet. Told her to repeat her song. <laughs> so there's a secret hiding place behind the church. She's not sure quite where it is. She's kind of forgotten, but it's right on this big rock, so it's easy for me to find. She's way off. But they wanted to make sure you could find her without rotating the camera. I'm not 100% sure you can find her without rotating the camera. Oh, I didn't buy the white shield. That's fine, I'll do that now. Oh no, she's already got it. Might buy another one for Melvin, though. Melvin takes that from Maribel at one point. Then I just give it to him now. Oh, next we're going to Lumen. Real quick, let me buy that shield. Yeah, that was a gold split on Corbina. I've still got three world leaves, that's pretty good. If I can keep those all the way to the end of the game, that'll be nice. Because I'll get one more in the final dungeon.
I might end up using one or two though. There's a couple fights like Ningle and Disc 2 that can take one from me. I'll generally prefer to use Time Sand if it's like early in a boss fight, but if I'm like more than halfway through any given boss, I'll just use a leaf instead of Time Sanding. Is there something else I get in here? No. I'm just being disruptive. Okay. Turn to Estard. So once again, we gotta find our Uncle Hondara. He's always trying to, you know, make a buck selling information, selling random crap. Right now, he is, uh, bragging about this item he used to have called the hot stone which is just this stone that's just warm and uh, he tells us that somebody came by and bought it from him it's this rich guy that has houses everywhere so we're gonna go to Crage because one of those mansions is here I think there's another one in Little Red. I think there's another one. Uh, he has a dedicated one that we're gonna go to that's not in a town. It's just a rich, giant house. But we have to talk to this guy to find out where he's at. Gruego is his name. Carpet to his mansion. Uh, we need to look down in here. Before we talk to this dude, we're gonna rob him. And sure, I think the other treasure chest is just shell armor, which is only worth like 300 gold. I'm gonna skip it. One of these chests has the magic key in it. Wrong. Yep. <laughs> right after I hit yes, I read the note that said bottom chest. It's four tiny metals. Boop, 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 boop. So yeah, we tell Borrego that we need the hot stone. He says, no. I'm rich. And he's like, hang on a minute. Um, can this thing actually revive the legendary hero? Why don't I come with you? Meanwhile, Borrego is just outwardly hoping he tells you that he hopes that the uh, legendary hero is some hot girl that he can make into his servant. So. This is why we can't have a hot hero. This is why we get Melvin. Borrego, you are the problem. A little past the end of the continent. Head northeast. Hey, an ocean encounter. Now we can guaranteed run first try because disc one ocean encounters are extremely weak. You're intended to fight them as soon as you get the boat, which is like level three. Uh, go in here. There's a shard in here. Yeah. Walk all the way over here to Amelia. 
of these nerds up here who are fishing. So this whole conversation is kind of dumb. Um, his assistant fishes up a fish, and he's like, Wow, this is an ocean fish. This is conclusive proof that there was a flood way back when. And it's like, does nobody fish in this river? Like, Did this experiment really have to be performed? Come in here. Lester, that's the wind. You're woofing at the wind. So the guy tells us that he wants to explore the tower to the north, which is the tower where we, uh, the bard was taking people. However, there's vicious monsters inside. And we look skilled at combat. Out of all the Dragon Quest heroes, this hero looks the least like a Master Swordsman, so I don't know where he gets that. <laughs> but, okay, we take the job. We'll go get rid of the monsters. But not yet. Here's the classic Dragon Quest carpet gate, where, uh... You have to fly over a body of water, walk through trees, and go carpet over another body of water to make sure you can't get here just with the boat. Japanese runs do another out of bounds in this tower that I am not able to produce, reproduce on this version. Patrick said he thinks it's patched. Probably was. They make it look easy though, it looks like they just walk right through the wall. <laughs> but it only saves a couple of seconds, so. I spent like five minutes trying to do it and moved on with my learning. Stealing my magic. There is a warrior. He only has 12 magic. Don't steal it. Need that magic for casting return. These guys are doing absolutely nothing to us. Blaze spell does not damage us. Anyway. clip is right here, it's like... This walks you through this wall, so you can get to the staircase. And if it saves you this encounter, I guess it saves you like 10 seconds, but... If you don't get the encounter, then it's substantially less. Alright, long changed. Yeah, I shouldn't have gone in there. Going here. This song's really creepy. Oh, song changed again. A lot of people misspell my dog's name. Probably because I never write it. This floor, the directions are hard to describe. Ugh. 
think you kind of just work your way in a little bit. Okay. When I use the hot stone, I'm going to stand up for a second. I'm probably not going to get back before I get control of the character. But... I don't know when my next break is. What else do I do before using this? Yeah, I'll equip the agility scarf. Uh, hot stone. Okay. I actually think that the longer break is when I talk to him. That wouldn't matter, I only lost like five seconds. Okay. Go back to this floor and jump off. And Bray goes out of here. And yes, we have awoken, resurrected, the legendary hero, Melvin, I guess. Step outside first. Turn to Hamelia. Oops. I'm only about 15 minutes behind my uh, run from the weekend before last that PB'd. Is really good. So yeah, Milton kind of feels like he doesn't have anything he excels at, but he really doesn't need to. He generally just covers for the gaps in our team. So like a lot of the rest of the run, he's just going to be on the heal tactic and healing somebody at the end of the turn like that. Um, he's also a really good uh, MP battery for outside in return because, you know, hero on the warrior class only has like 17 max MP and Maribel's the only source of casting outside. And she goes through her magic pretty fast when she's on mariner class. King Slime. King Slime drops a blueprint, which is something we will not be using in this run. There's this mechanic that's like a monster farm. Blueprints have something to do with that. I'm not sure exactly how it works. I don't know if I've ever gotten into it. 
I know if you complete the second bonus dungeon and do, uh, like, defeat the four spirits, that God joins your monster farm. So that's kind of cool. <laughs> but I don't know if you get actual rewards for filling up your monster farm. I don't really know how the recruitment works. Or the blueprints. I don't know. Just, you know, in case the game wasn't long enough. I'm gonna get this right now. This is not the time to get this, but I forget it if I save it for later. I'm gonna step out here. Slotchy's gonna leave the party when I do that. That's why you don't grab the shard right there. But whatever, it's a small time loss. Words for zero, yeah. Sounds about right. I know there's another blueprint somewhere in the speedrun that I pick up on accident pretty often. <clears throat> a treasure chest that I'm just like, ooh, what's in here? Oh, it's a blueprint. Oops. That's one of the directional mistakes that I make the most often in this entire run, is that specific one. I go this way. Blatchy, you'll warn me if I go the wrong way, right? Blueprints for rewards from other things, that makes sense. I'm sure this time I interact with the door. Stop it, evil turtle. Iron turtle. Oh yeah, he just he just bait. okay. I thought it rotated the camera so that we didn't see him do that, but okay. <laughs> nah, he just goes straight through the wall. <laughs> this way? No. Not so much, huh? Every time those things attack, I think they're gonna crit because of the boss later. My brain's like, no, please, quad hits me instead. I really don't like that palette on Golem. Not my least favorite palette in the game. Come on, Slotchy. Let's fix the floor. Oops. There's going to be a boss here called Gigamute. The reason the slimes are being rude is because there's this monster flying around called Gigamute that eats slimes. And he says, you know, if you help us with Gigamute, then we'll let those nerds in here to poke around. does a breath attack every other turn, um, though he, or rather every other action, but he only takes one to two actions per turn, and the first out of his three breath attacks is a strong breath, so I'm going to parry this turn so that we take much less damage from that. Back to this. Um, let's sap one more time, then I'll let Farabelle heal. Oh. 
He looks like he's wearing sunglasses. Yeah, kinda. When he's still like that, yeah. If he does two actions here, he might do... Right now. That's a little breath of mine. He's only been taking one action for turn now, hasn't he? That's good because he... Yeah, wow, he died already. <laughs> so, another like frustration about monsters taking two actions per turn is that that makes sap wear off a lot faster because sap is only good for a minimum of two or rather four actions fine turn to chameleon So yeah, if he's taking two actions per turn, then it's like guaranteed gone after three rounds. Whereas it just lasted the that entire fight for me. <laughs> now, that was either a five or six round fight, and he had a thousand HP. Get out of my way, lady. Happy 10 hours, everybody. We made it to double digits. Still feeling good. We come in here, the nerds are getting harassed by slimes, but... They see us, and they're like, oh, these are your friends. I'll be nice to them. Why didn't they say they knew you? Yeah, it's action-based. Which is really frustrating, just because it doesn't last very long to begin with. Um, all the status effects and buffs and debuffs in this game seem to last different numbers of turns. Like, I mentioned there's a blind attack earlier in the run that uh, only stuns you for like one or two turns, but the normal surround I think lasts like four to six turns, something like that. Maybe five to seven. And then sap and increase last like four to six actions, I think. They almost always wear off after four, though. Um, is this right or am I going to fall through the hole? No, it's right. Okay. Yeah, I do not have all of the uh, durations memorized because they're all different. I just know upper for sure because upper is very important to know on those early bosses where I'm trying to stack up my defense power and renew it before it wears off. <clears throat> Unfortunately, unlike in uh, DQ4, which uses the same engine, if you're debuffing a uh, boss, you can't renew the effect if it won't do anything. I can't just have Maribel cast Sap on him extra times. <clears throat> Though, if the boss has an odd number of defense power, then the third time you cast Sap on him, it will lower his defense power by one. So in those cases, you can kind of prolong it by getting that extra sap on him after three or four enemy actions. Okay, we got the shard. Um, that. And it works. So for most of the rest of the run, for the sake of the memory cursor, um, Southwest. I try to leave uh, Melvin's spell menu on outside and Heroes on return. Now, send the bonfire. Has a life nut in it? No, 
now we make the climb. Fortunately, the last time we have to climb this today. But don't worry. If you love watching me climb things I've already climbed before, Coastal Lighthouse is coming up in a few hours. Oh, wait. This is one of the few places where you grab a chest in the present that you didn't grab in the past. That's one of the two reasons we're here right now. I don't even know if there's monsters in here in the present. Probably not. But we're encounter canceling anyway. <laughs> Does the Ren have any breaks? It does have a few. Um. Mostly because of I'm using a turbo controller and there are some long dialogues where I can just set it to auto fire and get up and walk around. That was something that I explicitly labeled in my notes was any time a conversation was more than 60 seconds long, I wrote it down. This conversation's one minute long, this one's two minute long. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Get the full heal first. And I think we're going to Lumen. Not you. Why would I talk to a person? Go away. Drink the water. Drink it, Melvin. It'll make you strong. Oh, the Bender cursor is already wrong. Cool. Northwest room, northeast pedestal. This is the last fire island? No, there's two islands, but we do them both at the same time. Okay. Oh, Lumen. Or as they named it in the 3DS version, not again. This town has problems. Right away we see we're getting harassed by these imps. Baby goyles. Um, there's some giant holes in the ground. I'm not certain if anybody talks about the giant holes in the ground right now. But, uh, we're gonna do a little bug here. Guardian, um, Luber Dance, Knockdown, Backup, Land, Melvin, Heal, yes, and then Talk. So I told Melvin to use Guardian, and then I changed his tactic. So he's going to have the priority from Guardian, but he's going to do something else. So that lets me use Boxer Dance at the start of the turn to stun them. Gabba will hit them. Yeah, Baby Goyle will take its turn. Hero will stun them again. And then I'm just going to not set up the glitch a second time. Since they're already stunned. And ba boom boom. I use that like one or two other times in this run. Never against anything super important. Ah, uh, well, Orga Demir 2 1 is kind of important if I use it against him. No, oh, right. How am I talking to him? Gotta go in the well. But yeah, this town was under attack by a. Uh, I talk to you, I do talk to you a big plant monster and then uh, more monsters came and attacked the town as well so again I'm not sure if anybody talks about the plant monster now so spoiler if they don't we're gonna go in here we're gonna kick the boss of the monsters out of the town Orunga 
Barunga here is not difficult. He only takes one action per round. Um, he can build up power and then do a lot of damage on his next action. Uh, actually, leave him on heal. For the most part, we can just go full offense and let him heal us in reaction to whatever Boranga does. Weird dance is not what I wanted you to do, sir. I know it's what I told you to do. It's not what I wanted you to do. Get him, Melvin. Melvin got him. dead a little early because the sword dance doesn't animate every time. It usually has five little swoosh sound effects if it hits four times. But I only heard it four times so I knew he was dead. I had trouble. Barunga's been hit. If you talk to that guy before talking to Barunga, he tells you there's a key hidden in here so you know to search it. Also, just the fact that the camera pans over to him, and it gives you a hint that maybe you should check that out. Can't believe there's only five hours left. Me too. I also do not believe that. I wish that were true. Can you believe there's only five islands left, though, in disc one? In disc one. We hear this big roar. I'm gonna find out what's up with that. At least the big plant monster seems to have been taken care of. Down, bless stuff. Ow! You can just stab me for 50 damage. Yeah, we've got the legendary hero Melvin in our party. Melvin does his best. sword out of here. It's a very good sword. It's the sword of lethargy from DQ4, but it's not bugged. It doesn't work on bosses. But some good attack power. Our defense seeds for Maribel make her larger. Horns for Gabo.
give him that. How much attack boost is it? 10. I'm gonna put the bounce sword on Abo. anyone's ever said that before. There it is. I didn't really talk about the bounce sword, but it does in fact cast the bounce spell when I use it in battle. And that'll get a lot of use in the island that I do in the middle of this one. Because you have to revisit this one a few times before you finally solve the problem. Uh, the first time we leave, we're going to go to uh, Mardra. Take care of that. I think Mardra was my bottom-most tier island, if not Verdhem. I'm sure everyone's got a little damage from the damage tiles. I'm going to fight the Dark Draco here. The Dark Draco is the reason the sky is dark in this area. Also, the reason this bug works is because if you talk to your party enough, then the monsters get tired of you just standing there talking, and they start fighting. But if you've issued commands to your party, then those commands still go off. Nice. Four for four on knockdown baby coil. Did he just say, I suppose your fellow travelers too? What does that even mean? Alright, Dark Draco. This guy is really not too scary. Slower his defense and sword dance a lot. And Gabo and Melvin together will uh, keep the party healthy. Scorching is a little more dangerous, but whatever. We got him. We did it. We saved the town. Playing the normal town music. Not the sad town music. So it must have been saved. I 
Oh, I need to figure something out real quick. Do I have the ability to make poles? Oh, I do. Sweet, okay. <clears throat> we'll have a poll for Chibi later. Really, a random encounter in this chapter. Alright, is this really happening? Yeah, Dragon Man. Dragon Man demoted to random encounter, by the way. Immediately demoted to random encounter, because we skipped him. This island. Is that supposed to come straight in here? No. Okay, well, it did. Um, okay. Yeah, I was supposed to go to Lemon first. Whatever. going on in this town but the king is upset because one of his childhood friends died like 30 years ago and so he's trying to create the ultimate magic yes um there's also something going on with like this castle was at war with the other castle that's right beside it Like this island, I don't know all of its lore. Maybe you would like it more if you knew all the lore. Probably not. Probably not. <laughs> There's a lot of back and forth walking between this place and the shrine south of it in this island. A lot of dialogue. Isolating them off from this other place. What is this guy's relationship with the king? I keep thinking he was the king's other friend, but that's Dino. I don't know. Features like those still exist. I don't know, I understand why they exist. You try to get the player to engage with the online features, I don't know. It's usually content I'm never interested in, so it never really breaks my heart when they become unavailable. Just 
Melvin, right? Yeah. Did I just get crit for 40 damage? I guess she was parrying. <clears throat> yeah, I think that was the first time I've used the time sand, but any time I want, I can just reset to the beginning of any fight. Boss fight goes south, reset it. Going the right way. I don't know. That's not that one. Mm -mm. I remember this. I went to that staircase in my PB. I'd probably heal, but the game's about to heal me. Yeah, okay. I'm fine now. So yeah, we got the king trying to make the ultimate magic, and then the dude with the big old pot is trying to make the ultimate anti-magic. Uh, you first. That wasn't right. It was him first. Yeah, you can reach that multiple times in one fight. <clears throat> there's some games where it's a like one time use per day. I think there's one game where it's literally a consumable. You use it once and it's just gone. I think that's DQ6. But uh, this version is just fully overpowered. feels like one of the islands that they didn't really know how to make it flow well. Like, this whole dungeon just feels like it was tacked on because they needed to add a dungeon. There's no boss up here. There's no reason to go in here other than the fact that a guy told you to. He said he needed something from up here. Okay. done in there. I don't think I've mentioned this since near the start of the run, but if you're curious about the uh, camera movements, I move the camera as much as I do because it's faster to walk north and south versus east and west. <laughs> Compared to walking up and down, if you walk diagonally, you're moving at about 90% speed. Left and right, you're moving about 75% speed. So it's good to walk left and right as little as possible. Gave me another letter. Uh, really? Metal Riders, wow. Have I ever seen Metal Rider in a Q7 speedrun? I simply should not get a fight taking as few steps as I took. Leave me alone. I'm a quarter of a step away from this place. See?
I get a good break coming up here in a minute. There's like a minute and a half cutscene. Alright. Oops, stairs. Nope. Not stairs. to this guy. <laughs> yep, 18 hour estimate. We're over halfway though. Over the hill. It's downhill from here. It's really not downhill from here. It's really, really not. The first hour of disc two is a slog. Something in there. I'm one of those barrels that I want. I'm gonna grab it or I'm gonna forget it. Boom. Little girl's learning magic. This kind man offers to teach him how to cast the blaze most. Let's go. Fortunately, Dino stops time and runs in between them. So she doesn't get exploded. Forget this. What are your favorite Ireland's? I don't believe you. You definitely just turned my tier list upside down and called it your tier list. So as usual, the dude wearing the black cloak is an instigator. You go in here and he's talking to the king about the ultimate magic. He gives him something that he needs to finish the ultimate magic. Agree on Cave Mon Island? Okay. Well, that's good, at least. <laughs> that's weird, though. I would think that you would love Cave Mon Island. Maybe I don't believe you. Alright, this is a long cutscene. I'm gonna stand up for a minute.
All right. Lost a little time there, but got a lot done. Put the dog food and water, got me more water, used the bathroom, and threw some soup in the microwave. All in like three minutes. This game had a remake on the 3DS, yeah. But that's the only one so far. Immediately throw that shield on the hero. I'm also reminded that I bought the white shield for Melvin. I need to move that over. <clears throat> I guess I'm gonna equip one of these wizard rings on him. Um... Do I have the evade shirt still? No. You have Melvin this. Why don't you equip this? Good enough. Oh, there was an iOS version? Wasn't aware of that, but I'm not surprised either. Also not surprised that we didn't get it. Ah. Back to the big old pot dude. I'm gonna throw more stuff in his big old pot. The phrase big ol' shows up in my DQ7 notes at least four times. Usually regarding that guy or the Moai head you fight in the volcano. Duh! Am I ready for this? Well, I have to be. <laughs> We're not two steps into the town, you just fight this guy. I think I did do all the menuing I needed to do though. Oh uh, yeah, it looks like I did. Sweet. Oh. This is the Zoe Mage. Um, we're gonna. Oh, I don't have any HP. But besides that, I did everything. You know, besides healing. Out sword, plus staff. So this thing. Ah. Oh, wait, no. It worked, it worked. I thought Gabo didn't go first. This thing pretty much just casts spells. We want to see it cast more infermosts. Kind of just parry, huh? He's got full HP, so. It casts bounce pretty early, so Maribel can't do a lot against it. sword I can refresh before it wears off. 
This is also a good time to point out so that, uh, I guess explain Melvin's guardian ability since he's actually using it this time. Um, so basically it makes all enemy stuff target Melvin, but it also makes all items that I use target Melvin. Um, anything that I target on an ally or myself. So Gabo used the bounce sword and it went on to Melvin. And uh, if I were to use the plus staff, Melvin would also intercept with that. That's why I'm not healing with Maribel. Okay, so mage down. I actually don't need to heal because the next fight is a forced loss. <clears throat> This guy's like, oh, I just saw you beat up that dude. You say that guy was in cahoots with the king? You better go stop the king from doing whatever he's doing. <clears throat> Dino's already in here. Dino's apparently a reverend. <laughs> There's this weird ongoing thing throughout this localization where they use as many titles as possible for people. Like... The village leaders, for example, sometimes there's, you know, one that's a mayor, there's one that's an elder, a couple that are chiefs. <laughs> like, they pulled out the thesaurus for that. And then same thing with, I guess, the religious leaders. This guy's a reverend. There's also quite a few priests and other such words. <clears throat> I think this is the first time we hear this song. This is a, a song associated with Orgodemir the Demon Lord. I believe it plays in his castle. And a couple of other times that he shows up. Dragon Quest X offline mode isn't too long for a marathon. We might get it someday. Some year, I should say. Yeah, Zeppel owned us. Now he's flashing, blinking for some reason. I don't know. But then this guy just casually walks up and fully heals us. Hey, can you do that again if this guy beats us again? This fight coming up is not a guaranteed win. Talk to the big old pot dude. Mud Justus. He's gonna cast the ultimate anti magic. Try to dispel whatever it is the king did to himself to turn him into this evil beast. Now he's a little smaller. 
Look at him. You can take him, right? Let's we'll try. Kind of the same strat as the last fight, but not as consistent. Uh, do you sap him? Harry. <clears throat> no, I'm reading the wrong. Yeah. Just to bust that one. That's fine. He's got a lot of spells, we really want to see him use Fire Volt. Blaze must is fine though. Um, but he also has a Breath Attack, which will likely kill Melvin if he's not full HP. Oops. That would be good. Is that a Mirabal Punch him? right there. Series, the whole main series. A couple of spin-offs as well. The exclamation mark schedule, if you want to see the schedule. <sighs> I'm about halfway through Dragon Quest 7. Oh, it's bouncing all the way up the bar off again. Nope, never mind, he died. Cool. So that's pretty much the end of this island. Ultimate Magic did not win the day. There's more details of what happened here, but uh, combination of I don't know them and I don't care about them. <laughs> Mystic Nut. Here's... Oh, am I on the bottom floor? Okay. We are. Okay. Let's get out of here. This is not... Promise I've played this game before. Ah, the camera changed on me. That should be illegal. Camera changing on you. 
That, I thought if I was past the tree, I was fine. Okay. Okay, let's pay attention to Lumen, because Lumen's better. Uh, how do I get the Lumen? Let me scroll back up, because I accidentally skipped this. Ingal. Northeast. So we saved Lumen, right? We beat up the Dark Draco. Um, the sky cleared up. Lumen must be fine. There's no reason why I'm saying it like that. Oh no! It got destroyed. Not again! Talk to Melvin. He says we should go back to the past and see if something else happened. What else could possibly happen, Melvin? Well, we'll find out when we get there. For now, we got a shirt to pick up in here. And this treasure chest. The Lipsy Heart in it. Boop, 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 boop. I'll click. Yeah, you didn't get the evade shirt. Take this. Also take this. Ooh. Yum, yum, yum. Change the lipi Lipsy Heart with Melvin's Pot Iron. Your least favorite islands, you, you you just you took my list and you flipped it over. Not your actual list. I want your actual list. Nobody dislikes the Chibi Island. Oops. Yeah, this puzzle is exactly the same as it was in the past. The colors don't mind they redid for the present, but not most puzzles. Most revisits, it's just like, oh, this place again. Okay, get a question mark shard. What's a question mark shard? I don't know. We'll find out later. To the ruin. Heading back to Lumen. Let's see what happened after we left. I mean, you'd think that everything would be fine. There's no dragon. They've got all the sun they could ask for. More sunshine can't be a bad thing, right? What problem could possibly be stoked by more sunlight? Alright, the demon plan I mentioned. Oh no. Well. 
So yeah, this plant that was plaguing the town before the dark Draco showed up. It's the reason uh, all the holes were in town. But then the dark Draco covered up the sky and the plant wilted. And you can actually see the Hellvine on the hill that I keep passing on the way to town uh, before you take out the Dark Draco. And it just looks sad up there. But with the Dark Draco gone, <clears throat> it has crawled down into the depths underneath the town. Uh, no. Gabo probably said that because he doesn't have a weapon equal, which is fine. You're fine, Gabo, you got the flame claw. It's late in the game, we're 11 hours in, and that fight, one monster, gave me 80 XP and 20 gold. Yeah. Yeah, XP really does not scale very well in this game. They don't expect you to be grinding levels, they expect you to be grinding classes. I'm finding a lot of random encounters in dungeons that I don't expect to find a lot of random encounters. Where are we going? This armor, I really don't need money right now, but why not? This is like four grand. Someone mm. calls for help. There's no room for help. I'm set up for this. Melvin needs to go in the back. He's at that all equipped. That in his inventory. Okay. Well, let's watch the tactic. Alright. This is a fight that always seemed free when I was learning the game, and then it started killing me in runs. is when it uses Sweet Breath, um, it will almost surely put Melvin to sleep, and, uh, Melvin again, what are we doing? Bam, boom. and, uh, whenever it puts him to sleep, it will keep going, so it will target four times. If the first one hits Melvin and puts him to sleep, then it can still put Gabo and Maribel to sleep. But that's the reason that I have Melvin in the back row, because he is uh, protecting Hero at the minimum from Sweet Breath. So, this fight can go south if too many people get put to sleep before the vines are killed, but hopefully they die here. Hero is good with Sword Dance, he's not. Guardian. Good. Also, that 
AoE blind that Melvin completely intercepts. Okay. The boss itself does not have much HP. He will die pretty shortly. And I shouldn't have to parry anymore. 1300 HP on this boss. I think the apple had like 2200 for reference, so this guy has half as much HP as the last boss I fought. That's a single target. Super poison. That might be. Stop spell is also nasty. Man, plant has a lot of AoE status. Uh, yeah, plays more. Well, should be dead. All right, we got. Yeah, we're on track for sub 18 hours for sure. Right now I'm on pace for like uh including credits uh seventeen like forty some. Which Orgo Demir can change that. There's the antidotes. I like this trip into Lumen because you don't talk to a single person, you just come in and kill the hellvine and leave. <laughs> you watch that guy get sucked into the ground by the uh vine and just But it's good, we're good. I'm actually going to take a short break here in a second, partly to grab food and partly to run a poll on what to do in the uh, last trip into Lumen here. But we'll get to that. Back to Melvin again. I can't believe it. Not again. Oh no. It's been destroyed. There's something else I need to do. Carpet. South to the Sphinx. Because I never walked into Dune Castle, so I don't have the return point for Dune. Guess that's why you don't do this early. Oops, up here? Is that I thought it was further south? Yes, it is. I look like a sphinx to you. It's not a sphinx. It's a little house. This is a sphinx. Nah, I'm not tired yet. A couple hours ago I was kind of dragging, but... Good right now. Now, by the time disc two rolls around, it might be a different story. I'm just gonna steal this priceless artifact out of this museum. Now we go back to the room. Oh, good. Evil Ash took a nap for me. Tactical napping right now is everyone rotating. Is this right? This is right. No room on my desk. You add more food to it. What do I do about this? What is this thing? Look at this. 
I'm not gonna get killed by that. Alright. So what's going on now? There's no Hellvine, no monsters assaulting everybody. Let's go into the mayor's house. Who's this? Scree, scree! What you got here? Ah, didn't tell you my name, Ned. It's Sable, and this is my lovely pet, Chibi. Found him sticking to the Hellvine, and I took him home and cared for him. So he's got himself a new pet, Hellworm. Um, but you know, once you get to know him, he's a real cutie, right? Come on, Chibi, it's time to eat. Look at him eating that bowl of green. So here come the townspeople. They're not happy with Cybul's new pet. Um, you know, they've, they've just been attacked by a dragon, a big bathtub monster, and a hellvine. They don't want worms. Um, so, you know, they're, they're like, they're petitioning the mayor, you gotta get rid of this thing. And that brings us to our poll. Do we... What do we do about the hellworm? Do we save the worm? Do we kill the worm? Or do we let the worm kill us? Those are our three options. It looks kind of vicious. Look at this. They shoved the mayor and Chibi's just... just lunging at him. It's vicious. National Pet Day, is that true? Maybe we shouldn't kill Chibi. Well, it's up to Paul. It's out of my hands. Alright. You got like two and a half minutes to vote on that. I'm gonna stand up and get the food I was reheating earlier. And then we'll act on the will of the people. got like 45 seconds left. Looks like saving Chibi is in the lead. <clears throat> Followed by letting Chibi kill us. Followed by killing Chibi. He's a vicious monster. I don't know. I don't even know if I could kill him, honestly. <clears throat> I'm gonna put the controller over there. Alright, poll ended. We are saving Chibi. So, talk to this guy. He tells us, you know, we gotta be careful. We know, we know the mayor likes his pet, but he'll realize the error of his ways after we've killed the creature. The only problem is finding someone to slay the stalwart beast who could- Hey, I've got it. Can we ask you to handle this noblest of tasks? I'm sure there will be no objection seeing as you've already defeated the Dark Draco and the Hellvine. Can you do it? Can you do it for Lumen? Can you restore peace to our town once again? Are you really going to do this? This is the kind of work that can leave a bad taste in your mouth. 
That's a good point, actually. That's a good point. I'm gonna, I'm just gonna leave this to you guys. All right, they're fine with it. They understand. They say they'll take care of it themselves. It's just an insect after all. And then I'm immediately gonna snitch. <clears throat> For the record, my favorite option is letting Chibi kill you. Because that guy I was talking to outside says some funny stuff when you're trying to kill him. He really guilts you about, uh, you know, choosing to kill the worm. Like, oh, you're gonna have blood on your hands after this. We're glad we're leaving this to you. This is gonna be a difficult task. And then after Chibi kills you, you still get this scene here. So Sable's packed up a little suitcase for Chibi. Got all his toys and some treats and medicinal herbs in there. He's taking them out into the wild to dump them. Doink. So here he is. We come here to help him see off his pet hellworm. Should be safe here. Bought you a bunch of stuff. We got your favorite foods, your favorite toys as well, and take these medicinal herbs and if you get hurt. Wait, you're not smart enough to understand that. That was dumb of me, wasn't it? Bringing you medicinal herbs. <laughs> I'm sorry things have come to this, Chibi. I really wanted us to be together forever. But if I don't do something, your life will be in danger. I guess this is goodbye. Chibi, forgive us humans for being so thoughtless. Please, don't hate us. Scree, scree. Okay, people. It's all taken care of. Let's go. If we stay here any longer, it'll just be that more painful. Let's get going. Scree, scree. No, Chibi, stay away. You mustn't come with me. We can't be together anymore, Chibi. You've got to understand that. Scree, scree! Weak. Poor Chibi. But at least we didn't viciously murder him. So, we're gonna miss that little hellworm. Eek! What's that scream? It came from outside. Oh no! What is this? It's one of Chibi's cousins. Well, Chad didn't say I can't murder him. That's the temp sword putting the enemy to sleep. Let's get to the bottom of this. What are all these worms doing in our town? Also, antidote, because I don't like the screen flashing. Alright. No, oh, that's not the one with the back door. Okay. What's going on in here? Cool. What's going on in here? Sweet. While he's busy... Grab some money. Really don't need any of that, but now we've got it. We still got the Happy Town song playing. Yeah, all we have to do is pop in and out of each of these houses. If I really wanted to, I could interact with the Hellworm and it would start a battle. I could save them, but I'm pretty sure if you go in and out and then back in, uh, the Hellworm disappears. They don't check if you killed it, they just check if you went in the building. Oops. Oh, shut up, Melvin. Oh no, he's being attacked too. Oh, I did heal Melvin. Okay. That's 44. Probably. 
Ebo even shower? Probably not. He probably doesn't know what that means. You know what? Retaliate. That'll be funny. Spit webs at Mar Maribel. Melvin learned Vivify. Usually he gets that off Hellboy, I thought. Oh well. Alright. Chibi couldn't have ordered this attack. Chibi's too cute to associate with one of those things. I refuse to accept that these things are Chibi's friends. Okay, there's no time for that though. We don't have any time to waste, let's leave the town for the time being. What do we do? We're surrounded. But what's this? Chibi, you came back. It's not safe here. You gotta get out of here. Gah, scree! Get him, Chibi! Oh, this one's next, huh? Come on. Chibi's got like three times as much health as these things. He's got 1200, they got 500. Going three of these things is no problem for Chibi. Yeah, scared him off. You saved us, Chibi. You saved the whole town. Chibi, what's the matter? Oh no, Chibi! He used all of his power. Saving our lives. Chibi, no. Poor Chibi. I always forget that he has a pet bomb crag as well. Wouldn't the town be worried about that? Oh, isn't this? Let me read this. Yeah, here rests my friend Chibi. In here. <laughs> Alright, we did it. If you don't uh, save Chibi, if you kill Chibi, then uh, he doesn't show up there, obviously. Uh-oh. I did not equip Maribel again. Oh, well. But, yeah, you uh, you run off and hide in the well, and the Hellworms destroy the town, and Cybele's the only survivor. Maribel, I need that magical skirt. Come back. Okay, well. I don't have the magical skirt. <laughs> there are so many exclamation marks on that note in my notes. Oops. <laughs> that doesn't help if I don't scroll. That's fine. I've forgotten to do that in like half of my runs. And they turned out fine. Where am I going? Mardra? Why would I want to go to Mardra? Is this Northwest? There it is. <laughs> How many exclamation points? 51 exclamation point. But apparently it wasn't enough. I need to go here. Alright, so there's this secret pattern that does two things in Mardra. This is one of them. There's another treasure chest that unlocks that just doesn't really have anything cool in it. But, enter from the left, go out the right. Enter from the top, go out the bottom. One of these is a tiny metal. Wrong! Wrong one, five tiny metals. 
Good job. I know I... It's one of those things where I know that I get the tiny metal a lot on accident, so I think to myself, it must be the closer chest. Uh, and it's not. And then it just kind of becomes a self-perpetuating cycle. Back to Dharma. Oh yeah, it's grind time. Almost. Yeah, like, a couple minutes we gotta pick up Ira, and then it's grind time. But we're changing class in preparation. <clears throat> so Gabo's going back to healer class. He's gonna finish it off and learn heal us. Melvin is going to Lipsy class so that he can learn Cyclic. Yeah, the next island though is gorgeous, and I have plenty of money. I can, uh... Purchase an extra magical skirt. I don't know if Melvin can wear the magical skirt that they sell. There's two items in the game that are magical skirts. One's called magic and then like a skirt icon. And then one is called skirt. But it's actually magic. Where am I going? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. They can camp. Get off! Get off the... Get off! He went from epic hero to Lipsy. He sure did. Alright. In this town, our camp in the present. I need to talk to everybody. In the tent. These people are much less into it than the people who were here in the past. Carpet. So this is very much like uh, what we did in the past Deja Tribe area. They're talking about the legendary dancer Ira. Um, however, they do not have the legendary musician, the Tula player, that they had in the past. So they're not able to do the ceremony yet. Could be everything. this person with the unique spray go? Let's go find him. There she is. Ma'am, question. Would you like to spend the rest of your days using sword dance and absolutely nothing else? If so... Oh. Okay. Well, maybe not yet. Let's follow her back. So everyone's trying to coddle Ira here because she's the legendary dancer girl. <clears throat> um, but she says, you know, what's the point of being the legendary dancer girl if we don't have the Tula player? I'm going to go look for him. They're not a fan of that, but then we walk in the tent because, you know, heroes don't knock. And Ira's like, oh, these people can help me. 
Yeah, no, nah, I'm good. Let's do it. Uh, two of the players, sure. We will make no effort to find the Tula player until disc two, by the way. Where'd I get that pot? Oh, out here. What? I talked to him. He's done. Okay, so this is a two minute cutscene. I'm gonna eat my food during this. I don't know if Ira ever says this, but <clears throat> she is the descendant of Kiefer, whom we left to live in the past. I'm pretty sure this is his grave, or maybe Layla's grave, one or the other, that we're going to visit. I don't know. Yeah, there. And then that's the sword that Kiefer had at the end of the segment. When he became the Daedra Guardian, he was given it. <clears throat> Did I complete this game the first year it was released? No. I don't think I had a PlayStation when it came out. like late high school when I played this game so that would have been like mid 2000s late 2000s 2005 to 8 so the PlayStation 2 was definitely already out I don't think I had a PlayStation 2 yet what are we doing return to the ancient So yeah, this is the second class grind. It's going to be shorter than the first one. Still a good time to, you know, take care of anything you got to take care of. Okay, Rainbow's agility scarf has to go to hero. Temp sword. The Melvin. Bounce sword. Hero. Ninja sword to hero. Basically getting the highest damaging sword on hero. <clears throat> Yeah, we're gonna be in the past Dharma. Or about 65 fights. Pretty much what these fights are gonna look like. <laughs> now Kiefer does not ever come back. Um, the only instance where you hear from him again is after the credits of the game, 
you're out fishing with your dad and you fish up a stone tablet that just has a message on it from Kiefer. I don't know how he ensured that you would find that, but he did. I, I don't know. I know, my buddy likes fishing. I'll throw the tablet in the ocean. He's sure to find it. I, I don't know, it, it upsets me that it actually worked. Stumbled on it when it came out because of the Toriyama artwork. Nice. Yeah, DK7 is pretty hit or miss. A lot of people, like, don't finish it if they're not into it just because of how long it is, so the length kind of works against it for those people, but if you like the game, then the length can be a good thing. You get more of the game you're enjoying. I fought a lot of extra fights, so I don't think we're going to be waiting on Hero for the end of the screen. What we're doing um, right now is we need... We're waiting for it to say that Ira matured, which means she hit level 5 in Warrior. She started at level 3, so that should take 35 battles. And then I'm going to walk a little to the left here where Dharma is, go in there, change her to Dancer class. And she already has Dancer mastered, but... Um, I was talking earlier about hybrid skills, how with all of the basic classes that you have unlocked from the start, if you get the level 5 in one of those, switch to another one and get the level 5 in that one, you'll learn a special skill. Herb, nice. Thanks for the herb. Um, however, even though Ira has Dancer and Warrior as her only two classes, it the game doesn't know that the last class she had was Dancer. So, we have to go back to Dancer and do 30 more battles just for it to register that she did Warrior and Dancer back to back. And then she'll get Sword Dance. <clears throat> and even though she gets nothing else out of those 30 battles except for Sword Dance, it's plenty worth it. I mean, just look at how ridiculous this skill is. In the other classes, Hero is going to finish Warrior class, um, which is going to give him Evil Slash. Ooh, as a ellipsy, Melvin became moist. Nice. Um, Melvin is going to become moist and then wet as a uh, ellipsy. Important. Did I say what Hero gets when he masters Warrior? He gets Evil Slash, which is important for killing uh, Metal Babbles and King Metals. Uh, Melvin gets Cyclic at like rank four or five, but he goes one rank further than he needs to. Um, Gabo, I mentioned earlier, is getting heal us. Uh, he already has heal all and heal more from the healer class. And yeah, that's the team. <clears throat> These are the four characters that we'll be taking against the final boss of the game. Um, our party will change up between now and then. Um, when we start Disc 2, uh, Melvin will temporarily leave and we'll have Maribel back instead and she'll be underleveled and she'll just be sitting in front of the party parrying like she was in Dharma. <laughs> but it's fine. And if you had equipped the Blessed Staff, would you just lose it here? On each of the, uh, each rank of each class, you get a new title, and the, uh, ellipsy titles are uncomfortable. Discomforting, that's the word. It only took me 
to beat it the first time. Not offhand, but I want to say around 100 hours. I know my second playthrough, which I streamed like 70 years ago at this point, was like 70, 80 hours. <clears throat> It's a long game. Shortly before uh, my 35th battle here, we should see Melvin become pouty. I need to pay a little attention. Hey, thanks for the herb. Similar to how we were grinding in Ingao because at the end of the Ingao grind we reached level 13 and Ingao caps at level 13. I believe this zone caps at whatever Ira level is right now. 21. Up. You didn't get it, did you? No. But Melvin's pouty. But we are close. <clears throat> I don't know what that is making up message was. Yeah, they warn you in the Dharma Shrine that the monsters you fight have to be of a certain strength, but uh, some of the areas are pretty high levels. Like, you have to be 10 levels above where they expect you to be for them to not count. So, Ingao's overworld is level 3, therefore you can grind there until you're level 13. Then at 14, they don't count anymore. <laughs> play DQ6 for female era caps, yeah. I did not play. Well, I played DQ6 before playing this, but I did not get to Dharma. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. Bossy tells me there's nothing more she can learn as a dancer. We're going to prove her wrong.
Yeah, correct. We didn't get DQ6 until late in the Nintendo DS's lifespan. Didn't get the SFC version. Alright. We need, not counting that fight, about 32 more fights. For Gabo to learn heal us. So our grind is already half done. QRTA became elite. had to try playing DQ6 several times before I actually beat it. I don't know. I'm not certain. As a Lipsy, Melvin became wet. And you learned Cyclic. Now he can lick Melty Orgo. But we'll get to that in six hours. Hopefully more like five. All goes well. Personal favorite Dragon Quest, probably four. With a lot of nostalgia bias. Three and four both have a lot of nostalgia bias for me. Ignoring those two, I'd probably pick eight though. got about a thousand hours invested in speedrunning and uh, charting and researching Dragon Quest 4, specifically the NES version. So I probably have to give it to that. So this game, I expect what? Completed like 10 runs of this, so there's 200 hours already. Plus it took me three months to learn it. I've invested quite a lot of time into this run, considering it's... I'd put it in, like, the middle of my tier list. I don't know, Mario, I kind of like making cake. wish that the game liked me back so that I didn't have to make a PB anniversary cake. So that I didn't actually go a full year of actively running the game without getting a PB. Or 
there he is. That's the guy. That's that's the guy that did it. Get him out of here. Ash has him. <laughs> I zoned out. We're not done. Indicator that Ira is a descendant of Kiefer is the fire slash. I'm not a hundred percent sure if you can learn fire slash in this game, or if it's only Kiefer and Ira. Maybe the Magic Knight still has it. I want to say they don't. I want to say in between six and seven, they only have it in one. I might be wrong. Like I know anything about DQ6. some kind of rank soon. Give me an indication of where we're at. I want the drag slime on the map. Slash. All right. <clears throat> I fought way too many random encounters. As a lipsy, Melvin became sweet. point Melvin has been relying on boxer dance to acquire women but that's just not appropriate these days Melvin okay three fights to go we need to stop his kissing game see a big smile on the mountain on the left? Because I do and I hate it. <laughs> every run, every battle of this grind, I see that mountain. I see it smiling at me and I don't like it. Okay, is that it? One more? That's it. Okay, we're good. 
You can see Gabba turned into a heel slime there. That's pretty much all we're going to see of that. It only happens outside of battle and only while he's in that class. And the present Dharma. <clears throat> and since we are so distraught that Maribel has left the team, we're going to change all four of our characters into Maribel class. Alright, it makes sense that I'm losing time since Probina, because I waited two and a half minutes on a Twitch poll. Okay. <laughs> yeah, we're good. pedestals. Three to go. One of them is my least favorite. And I think I've said that about three islands so far. But I think I mean it with this one. And I know I meant it with the other two as well. But that was hours ago. You can't... I mean, a person changes. Southeast pedestal. The last of the wind trines or wind pedestals. Okay, I turned it the wrong way. We're already done with fire. We got one wind, then one earth, then one water. Then we fight the demon lord. And then that's disc one. This is the village of gorges. It's in a gorge. Yeah? Um... The people here have wings. Except that one. But it's fine. These boys will tease her about it until she grows some. Yeah, Furia is pretty chill. She's the only person in the wing person town that doesn't have wings, but she's just like, whatever. Parents say I'm an orphan, so, you know, I'm not supposed to have wings. Uh, magical skirt. Melvin cannot equip this. I'll well, just do without, whatever. <clears throat> There's any way I can get 10,000 gold though. Uh, that may not be as unreachable as it appears.
I got the double armor. <clears throat> got an iron mask. Actually, hang on. I don't have to sell that, someone can equip it. Speed ring I can sell. And there's my money. I forget the difference between um, this equipment and the thing that Melvin's supposed to have. Oh, whatever. Alright, we're good. It might be the same, I'm not sure. I know it's more defense power, but defense power doesn't really mean anything at this point in the game. Oh, speaking of defense power not meaning anything. Who wants this iron mask? Alright. I don't know anything about this village, I just encounter cancel on it. <laughs> Come on. Mm. Alright. So... What is going on in Gorgeous? Something's going on. Maybe they're just complaining about monsters. I don't know. But they seem to think that if we get the Bliss Rock, that it will help. So we, random strangers, decide to go get the Bliss Rock. That's really cool that my entire team is poisoned right now. for Gabo. I'm not sure which boss this is for, though. They just sort of goes back to Ira. Mount Sword goes to Gabo. Sword to hero.
amaze me. Yeah, there's a couple Final Fantasy abilities that enemies get that just spam you with every bad status effect in the book. The Marlboro Bad Breath is probably what you're thinking of. There's also some bosses. Like, uh, x -Death has an ability that throws a bunch of stuff on you. Come on. the hell genie, Melvin. 20 bucks if you lick the hell genie. Infamous. Infamous just hit Ira for 12 damage. It's a tier 3 spell. That's a large part of why I say defense power isn't a very important stat in this game. <laughs> You can get Infernos down to 10 damage. Mm. Don't worry about that. No fight, I think, means no offense. There's a separate tactic just called heal. Boss fight's really easy. <clears throat> the next one's a little trickier. This guy's just kind of in the way. I don't think he ever used his, uh... He has an AoE attack that might be the same one that the Fire Giant used at the beginning of the game. Where he just kind of sits on you. And it does like 30 damage. I don't think he ever did that. Melvin? You stuck? You need help? Rock. Then we gotta go all the way back to town.
this little scene in here. Been, it's been okay. Had some bad luck with some of the very early bosses, but it's been pretty good ever since then. The cave, or not cave on the death bell. Death is probably my biggest regret of the run, but whatever. It's a few minutes. A few minutes in the scope of an 18 hour run. Classic Dragon Quest line when we're skipping to the next day. <clears throat> I'm on a good pace right now, though. Uh, looks like currently like a 1735 if everything goes the same as in my PB. Which I think was pretty clean from here on out. I don't remember. I never remember my PBs. Forgetting something. Oops. Oh, no, I'm not. I'm not. I thought... Only me. I thought Amy would be in her house, but now she's over here. Good point. I've got the bliss rock on me right now, which creates wind. Actually, no, it's not on me. Uh, Amy has it. She'll give it to me in a minute, though. Yeah, apparently, these people just fall over and can't move if the wind stops. That's kind of a glaring weakness, but all right. Don't worry, Furia, there's no fall damage in this series. That's proven later. Also, just by me jumping off. Furia, really, a dude falls on a volcano later and he's fine. Okay. We find out here that uh, there's a door behind the where we got the Bliss Rock. It can only be opened by a member of this tribe. Fury is falling out the window. Never noticed that before. That's funny. <laughs> um, but yeah, all the uh, real members of the tribe 
are collapsed on the ground because the wind has stopped. Except they reveal to Kyria that she is not actually adopted. She is a wing person, she just doesn't have wings for some reason. So, Fury is excited. Her parents might be her real parents after all. And we're gonna go see if she can open the door. DQ7. I don't know about that one. Maybe it could be interesting if they put a lot of effort into balancing it, but RPG randomizers always remove a lot of the RPG elements. I would assume if somebody made a Dragon Plus 7 randomizer, they would, like, you know, multiply all the experience by. Pfft, Eight, ten. Uh, probably one battle gives you ten credits toward your class level up. Things like that. But just I'm not I'm not really interested in that. I'm not playing Dragon Quest Seven at that point. Maybe I shouldn't voice my opinions of RPG randomizers on the RPG Limit Break Twitch channel. There's been a lot of randomizers on here lately. <laughs> I still think these statues look like Pokemon substitute dolls. See, that's exactly what I'm talking about. <laughs> I want an RPG randomizer where I gotta actually think about how to handle random encounters and boss fights, but balancing that is such a nightmare that nobody even tries it. You just make sure there's a grind spot where you can get over leveled and then beat the boss that way. I'm sure there's occasional exceptions, but... I want those occasional exceptions to be the focus. Oops, thought there was a door there. We're almost back. I really wish you didn't have to walk through that other cave area. It completely disappears when you beat this next boss. I don't know why they didn't make it disappear earlier. Mark down first, and then get it. Buff. Oh, okay. Wait, no. See, there's there's the opposite where you can't use it out of your inventory. You have to interact with the thing to use it. The pedestal. There's several places earlier where I kept trying to do the opposite of that. Alright. We need to reroute the path of this room to make the wind point outside. Pretty much we just wrap around counterclockwise. And 
the reason we're doing this is because there's that dark cloud over the goddess statue out there, the wind spirit statue, rather. I want to blow that away. Hmm. There it goes. The dog is buffing. Furia grabs the Bliss Rock. Oink. And is there anything I need to do before I do this? This boss calls for help a lot, so we want to see him not do that, because he has 3,000 HP, and the backup just slows things down even more. That's fine, you can do that whoosh 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 attack all you want. It's going really good. Definitely still on pace to be well under 18 hours, even showing all the credits. If poor good of mirror behaves. At this point, I can definitely afford to die to any other boss. Orgo could cost me the 20 difference. Oh, I just won't die to Orgo, I think. That's gonna be my plan. sun starts setting here, my brother's dog might start moving, and if she does that too much, I might have to switch to push to talk until he gets home in about an hour to assuage her. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, I should have Jambo shoot the baby. Whatever. He really hasn't helped her up too much. Last time I fought this guy, I had like four of these baby clouds on screen at one point. It was a real nuisance. They were putting my team to sleep. I think that's the fourth total that he summoned in this fight. I also don't know if he ever did an AoE skill. Did he ever use Vacuum? I don't know. That was a really polite Hell Cloud. No Vacuum, okay. No, I do not run DQ6. Oh, should I not say I should have had him shoot the baby? Okay, I should have had him blow up the baby with Blazemore. Disintegrate it. Vaporize it. What up, Wizard Ring? Now oh, we just outside, right? Alright. Hate this death warp. I hate everything about the next island. Starting with this death warp. Not yeah, well. But we want to take as much damage as we can without wiping before we leave this place. And I'm pretty much walking straight out right now. But we've defeated the Hell Club. Cool, thanks for Ice Bowl. I don't know why that didn't damage whoever it hit. Maybe Mariner class has resistance to Ice Bolt. Might run back and turn that bedroom light on real quick. That might help with the woofing. I'll wait till the conversation. How stretching feels good. Ah. Yeah, my bad. I need to update my notes there. It says that this is a one and a half minute cutscene, but it's actually two shorter cutscenes. Whoops. three times, haven't I? That's the girl from Little Red. This is Furia. Oh well. <laughs> the same sprite. Whatever. I'm out of here. Alright. 
Yeah, one's got a hurt leg, the other's got no wings. It's kind of the same. Not in a terrible death ward position. shard that I've forgotten multiple times. Build an airship with it. Very possibly. We'll do something with it, that's for sure. We do use it to uh, get the a real flying view. Well, not a magic carpet. It's still better than a flying bed. Here, for some reason, there is a shard. Walk outside? Can I not cast outside? I can't. Okay. Fine. I really dislike this island coming up. I wish it were not here. I never want to do it. That's really my main issue with it, is just like... Trying to have this momentum of, alright, there's two islands left. Then, one of them's this island. This island's almost nothing but dialogue. It's pretty short. It's like 20 minutes long, but the boss is a complete joke. It's the easiest boss in the speedrun. Easily. Easily easy. Really? This is what you're gonna send to help me death warp? Oh. Oh, that's actually- oh. Actually wonderful. Yeah, keep doing that. It's more dangerous than the actual fight I need to lose. <laughs> Yeah, I can revisit these at any time. I'm pretty sure even in disc two. I don't know that I've ever tried it. I know at least one of the Bowman's Dungeons altars is in there. Uh, oh, I've got someone on a good. Melvin was gonna heal if that didn't happen. Yeah, that's the main problem, is that they failed. Oh, one more attack and they'll kill me. I'll just hold turbo. Nope. Okay. So, yeah, this town has a big fog all over it. Nobody's really sure what's going on with that. But 
There's a monster that's been terrorizing the village in some capacity. And the villagers sent a group of people out to take care of the monster. And none of them came back. Instead, the monster came back wearing the clothing of the priest they sent. And no matter how obvious it becomes that the priest has transformed into the monster, uh, the villagers are going to come up with a stupid plan to destroy him. <laughs> Basically. I need to talk to this nun. Oh, I missed this guy. I need to re-equip too. Pretty much everyone in this town is just asking me for help with this monster that's been in the church. There he is. Oh, no, no, no. The monster didn't seem to be doing anything too bad. It's like, hey. And then the kid's like, wow. Yeah, see, the kid gets up. I leave and re-enter there, because otherwise, after I'm done talking to the kid, he'll say something else when I try to leave. But leaving there sets a trigger to... that makes it think that I've already heard that text. Alright, so now we're gonna have a meeting to figure out what to do about this monster. Kind of like with Chibi, the villagers are going to ask me to take care of this. The guy says I saved him from the monsters that were attacking him. No. No, I didn't. Actually. No. I got beat up. Kid has doubts. The monster is a monster. So we're, they're coming up with a plan here. So the plan, first plan proposed, is to set the pre church on fire and smoke them out. But then they're like, "Okay, but what if the whole village burns down on accident?" Then they say, okay, that's a good point. Let's just stand around the church and yell, fire, fire. And then see if it runs out of the <laughs> church. Uh. Excuse me, excuse me, excuse me.
Oh, here he is. Here's the monster. Just look at this guy. He just kind of looks sad. And after talking to him twice, they just uh, like, forget it, we'll do it ourselves. And they start doing it themselves. Also, Lucas is over here. Hello, Lucas. Lucas is joining the party. I'm sure he'll contribute a whole lot. Not just be a complete waste of space. I'm not actually sure about that at all. Here they go surrounding him, kind of like the well in Crage. Talk to the prefect again. And they decide that since we're trying to stop them from killing the monster, that we must be in league with the monsters. We must be evil too. So they throw us out of town. to interact with this door or Lucas will not let you leave. <clears throat> and now with pretty much no leads to go on, we're just gonna walk straight to the boss. In here, right? We don't even know there is another monster, but we just end up finding him. Boop. Stop texting me. Wait, maybe that's my brother saying he's bringing food. Maybe I should check that text. No, it's not. Okay. I got excited for a second. fight in this room. It's very large. this fight. Let's talk to him. Oh, I didn't get the world do out of uh present this rock train. 
Hmm. I'll have to remember that. It's fine. I walked through there a few more times. What we're doing here is, uh... The monster from the top of the mountain made a deal with the priest to... Like, apparently they switched forms and then the priest said, okay, you can't attack the village as long as I'm alive, and now the villagers are killing the priest, so this dude's also going to attack the village when the priest dies, but also this guy is useless, so I don't know why anyone's worried. Kepa's just using the bounce sword to protect himself from stop spell. Oh, then he's already hit the guy with Cyclic, so he's gonna lose a turn and he lost a lot of defense power. those dodges. Alright. Yeah, it's only 2,000 XP. Apparently two levels, though. So a bug is going to trigger when we hit the overworld here. That's kind of the only interesting thing about this island. <clears throat> so after Lucas talks to us on the overworld here, we're going to have a uh, town movement speed, as you can see. On the overworld. You usually walk a little slower than that in the overworld. talking about DQ2 when when I said it wasn't worth reviving him is anyone ever truly talking about DQ2 I guess we'll be talking about DQ2 when the race comes up when is that Saturday night This is probably the jesus -iest part of the Dragon Quest series.
Lucas just drags the guy by his head. Are they crucifying that dude a little bit. A little bit. <laughs> just a little bit. Have the mystic knot. Maybe more than a little bit. I need to talk to him. Maybe I need to talk to this guy. Yeah. Uh, need to stand up and take care of something in a second, too. has decided to leave town. It turns out that this is the backstory of the Probina priest that nobody asked about. Um, this is how he ended up with the goddess statue. Kid gives it to him as he's leaving here. Wow, no party join jingle. Okay. Nobody asked a priest. Nobody cares. Go to Probina. Just head off to Probina, it'll be fine. Alright, I'll be back in a minute. Sorry about that. Not a mess to clean up, but I got it handled. 
And we're finally out of Labrys. We leave empty-handed. They don't give you anything. It's great. to Lumen. Regrettably, we have to go east to Labrys. But we don't have to do a whole lot here. There's a big subplot here that I don't care about. <laughs> Everybody in this town, except for this child and his grandpa, seem to have forgotten that the priest was not actually a monster. And I think if you follow the plot, you can like convince them that of the truth, but I don't care. It's a speedrun, we don't need to do that. Let's get to let's get to a cooler island. The last island. Lighthouse Island. Ooh, my split for this one is 45 minutes long. Starting off here, trying to stay at the inn, not able to because the innkeeper's not there. That was her. But she's right here. So, everybody in this town tells you, hey, you shouldn't stay here, you should move on, travelers, etc, etc. The innkeeper there tells us, but if you had permission from the king, I guess it would be okay. Go talk to the king. I mean the minister. Apparently not the king. <laughs> so, the minister's like, no, you really shouldn't stay here. And the king's like, you know what? <laughs> Doesn't matter. We're so screwed. Why not just let him stay here and see what happens? So we're gonna stay here and we're gonna see what happens. Oops. These are the upstairs. And that. Another pirate shirt. We sell a lot of pirate shirts in this room. Hello? Oh, she's uh right. And a her. That makes sense. <laughs> King gave me permission. Why do I have to talk to the innkeeper? Talk to her twice. Mm. Around the stairs. What's going on outside? We heard a roar. This lady's yelling, my baby, my baby. This monster is bullying her. We're going to find out here that at night, the children in Coastal have been turning into monsters and just running off. Oh. 
for story time. This is the longest cutscene so far, about three and a half minutes long. I don't think it's regarding any of uh, Coastal's current pressing issues. I think this is just an introduction to Captain Shark Eye. I don't know all of his deal because I usually stand up during all these cutscenes. <laughs> um, he's got a big boat though. Yep, big old boat. Um, he's like Hero's ancestor or something. It's gonna be a minute till we meet him though. We won't meet him till disc two. Um. He has a girlfriend in the past. He might actually be like Hero's dad. I think there's a thing where like... His pregnant wife dies and then like a hundred years later you're born. And like... I don't know. Something like that. I think that's how babies work. Why is flower on the boat? I know Shark Eye is pals with uh, the King of Coastal, and uh, he goes off to fight the Demon Lord, and it doesn't go well. There's the girl. I think she's the princess of Coastal. Yeah. Probably. And Charkai leads the Coastal Navy.
No, oh, it's already over. Okay. for the dedication to the run. No problem. Somebody's gonna do it. It's not entirely true. We've had the marathon without seven before. <laughs> oh, to the right, to the right. Gonna get another question mark shard over here. The DQ speedrunning scene is much bigger in Japan than it is in the West. I was saying uh, this earlier, but the leaderboard for this game, the Japanese leaderboard, has 41 people on it, and the speedrun.com leaderboard has three people on it. So, even just for this game specifically, much more runners on the Japanese side. But the game's also three hours shorter in Japanese just because of all the text differences and... No. It's probably not the entire three hour gap. Oh no. I'm stuck in a loop. I need to say no. There used to be a cutoff on Dragon Quest 3 on the Nico board. You had to have a four hour time or better to get your time put up on the site because so many people ran it. But I think these days they got rid of that restriction. Dragon Quest 3 Super Famicom specifically. Hey, actual Foo Heroes. Counter cancel in the lighthouse. Not a fan of this monster sprite, the color palette. You're a snail. It sounds like a DS name. It's not bad enough to be a DS name. Unless they don't actually paralyze you. This path here that's pretty hard to see. A fight? Cool. cancel. There's something I want to grab down there later, but there are monsters there right now that won't be there later. It's the Dwarf Festival song. Gotta run away. Dwarves don't like people. It's the Dwarf Festival song. Yeah, the King of Coastal said, hey, try to figure out our baby problem. Why do they keep turning into monsters and running off? And then, uh... 
I think we've already got the plan going here. So what we're doing is we're trying to find this item called the Glim Moss. But we will stick to the feet of the babies, and then they'll turn into monsters and leave footprints behind. That glow in the dark. We could also just try following one. Wait, I did this last round too. No, that's lighter. Um, yeah, I don't know. They're 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 sneaky babies. They get away. Yeah, I think you need like a sub four time in Japan to get your driver's license, so. There's a few. A few runners of it. Alright, I hate this boss. This boss is dumb. I hate it largely because it killed me once. But which boss hasn't killed me once? Sure, even freaking Botox has killed me. Uh, cyclic, sword dance, knockdown, seahorser, sword dance. Good. Okay. Medius has no defense power left. That's not good. Stop with the scorching. the sea dragon. Unaffected. Okay, give up on that. Why is your flame claw equipped? More. Okay. No, it's not scorching. dude. Alright, we got the Glim Moss. Eddie Melva. Where are my antidotes? No, not very many of them. Uh. 
I also have to issue a warning that my brother's gonna be home soon, and when that happens, my dog's gonna be making a lot of noise, so I might go on mute for five to ten minutes. And or do some push to talk action and just not commentate quite as much till things calm down. But. I said something that triggered him, now he's staring out the window. There's nothing out there. It'll be like five more minutes. Oh. I'm staring at the dog, and I hear text continuing to pop up. I thought the scene was still going. Okay. The dog take over the run? Well, he'll be running around the room. Yeah, the 3DS remake does have the on-screen encounters, but they're actually kind of annoying because they block your path all the time. Especially later in the game when the monsters get enormous. Okay, see you know what seeds I have in here? Shop. Maybe you. What about you? No. Okay. Need to buy more antidotes. kept to himself all day. Cabo's paralyzed, that's cool. I don't think paralysis lasts at all outside of battle. I think it wears off the moment you leave battle. Alright, so here's our glow-in-the-dark footprints. Turns out they led to the lighthouse, and it turns out they're going to the top of the lighthouse. Wow! I could have predicted. I feel like this dungeon could have definitely been executed on better. I feel like if the king had just unlocked the lighthouse, I could have come here and uh, found the children for him. Wouldn't have to murder Gamadius and his fish friends. Babbles right now are really nice. Just one won't give me very many levels, but if I kill one or two, it does make a couple of things a little more stable for at least a little while. And they're all gone. 
Five out of five runs. Mocking me now. That's just as well. Last run I did, I got two of them. I hate this room. I hate this room a lot. This is one of my least favorite rooms in this game. You get to stand and you wait. How did a baby figure this room out? Gotta be fast here. That was not fast. I'm gonna go for it, but I'm gonna miss it. I missed it. the parts of this that are like right where you get on when it comes towards you and then immediately starts pulling away once it connects that part's better where it slides it makes contact for longer all right remember the rainbow dew that i picked up <laughs> i wouldn't kid in 10 or 11 hours ago this time to use that Dark dimension. There's not much to this boss. He's... I think he has a very weak AoE attack. Um, and he can get critical hits for big damage. But he's probably not gonna kill anybody, and if he does, I don't know. Vivify them or something. Oh yeah, and you can stick lick him. Oh, that was evil slime. The problem with Metal Babble is they screw up my memory cursor. Yeah, this is his AoE attack. Uh, memory cursor fixed. What are you smugging for? It wasn't turbo, it was memory cursor. We killed the monster that was stealing the babies, but we didn't save the babies. They die for some reason. Farewell, babies. Yeah, we have to go down these stairs before we can cast outside.
And the king is going to task us with relighting the lighthouse now that we've put out the evil fire in the lighthouse. We must find the pilot fire, which is at Ingao. Uh, we gotta go to the present. Ingao, we'll give him this letter. Alright, we got the pilot fire, back up the lighthouse. Things are settling down. Yeah, I feel like this whole arc would have been a lot better if this dungeon were an actual maze and not just, like, a pretty small tower. It's tall, but, I mean, like, you can see over all the walls and figure out where you need to go. You really don't need footprints to get yourself up here. different monsters in this dungeon that used to be bosses. Wolf devil there. I should have healed. But I didn't. It's fine, we're fine. We 
waiting on this block again. Dragon Quest for him. We've completed Final Island. Cutscene here. With two and a half minutes of post coastal. And we're done with all the Jar Islands. old guy. Yeah, 
Yeah, I see that. Alright. Apparently the bard we talked to was a dream. Flying clues for Melvin. Ice shields for everyone who can equip them. That's not Melvin. Don't accept Melvin.
Fight the butch man. Okay, we talked to the Grand Elder Halfling. Another question mark shard. And the sea roar staff. fights right before he can cancel. toward fighting the demon lord. We've restored almost the whole world. There's two pedestals that we gotta put these question mark shards into them. One is gonna be at the end of this path. I'm 
Hadi. Rock that was summoning the wind in gorges. Now we find that it has other uses. This takes us up to this sky sanctuary, Act One. And you can ride this little rock thing around four different destinations. We're interested in the north destination. It's got this pedestal on it. And we have three shards. Again. Bosses that are scary in the speedrun. A lot of them are early. Uh, Cavemon and Evil Mech are two of them. Uh, Inop and Gons is really the biggest one. The first boss in Dharma. And then uh, Orgodomir 2. Specifically, Phase 2 3. We'll see all about that in three and a half hours. All right. I'm just bus rock again. I'm not standing on the thing. There's a couple other random mosses that can get kills on you. Ningle is kind of rude. Hmm. 
Well, most of the mid game is pretty cozy because you grind and get good skills. And then, uh. Um, really, most of Disc 2 pulls its punches too because it knows it gives you Maribel when you may not have Ranger as much as Melvin. Why was I stuck on there? Oh, there's ghosts. I may not be able to death warp on these. They might explode. For 35 when I have no equipment. Okay. That's a start. Oh, I need Gabba to do his thing. Uh, tackle. Okay. Alright. No, oh, miss. Okay, so we go in here. Talk to this lady. And we get the Sky Stone. Somewhere I'm supposed to step to get a full heat. Hmm. Well, that in a minute. Sold on that death warp if you have to. Oops. Also, go there to revive. I guess it's on the way if you go clockwise instead of counterclockwise. <clears throat> Rank all the DQ airships, I know. Flying bed is the bottom one. That's my strongest opinion. Oops. 
Okay. Almost Demon Lord fight. Then we can move on to disc two. Happy nearly fourteen hours, everybody. Here's a cutscene. Here we get to find out what happened to Melvin and God and the Demon Lord. God exploded. But that took a lot out of him. Killing God is hard. So he's just gonna chill in his chair for a bit. Oh, the train. I might put train under flying bed. See this? That I think I'm fine. I yeah, hope I will. Okay. Here. I don't know who this is supposed to be. Deathmore 2? Orgo a fan? found any encounters since you were there. You hit the thing. Um, let's see. We are not fully cool. I should have done that. I should have healed from Melvin. Oh well. Don't break this. Eight? Really? Oh, that's his max. Okay. Um, I'll spread these out. Melvin, you should probably wear something. Um. Oh, Gabba's got one too. I've got four world leaves. That's cool. Where's the do? You have it. With Melvin. No, I'll give it to Gabbo. In case of an emergency. I think that's the only one I have right now. 
just in case you manage to break this. Plus staff, yeah. That right here. <clears throat> All right. Orgodimir one. Spoiler: There will be an Orgodimir two. All right, this phase. All right, Melvin on heal tactic. Dance. Okay, Blaze Mouse, so he's... On his first pattern. Supposed to guardian with bounce sword up throughout his entire second pattern, but he only stayed in the second pattern from one action. Here's a reason, so we are bouncing very easy. Being silly. Pungent. Lightning shouldn't do much damage, if any, to Melvin. There's the exploded. Okay, well, the third one killed him. <laughs> Phase two. I'll put Melvin back on heal. Bounce so I can heal on this magic now. Oh, 
This phase can also do either one or two actions for her, depending on how he's feeling. <clears throat> this one's keep throwing out freezing pulses, that's cool. of this one. Essentially, disc one. You've defeated the demon lord. He's gone forever. Nothing will bring him back. Definitely nothing. We're good now. We're not going to revisit what I just said in two hours. change disks. Also, the final landmass is unsealed now, which is the lake where God was in prison.
One disc down, one disc to go. What are we gonna do now that I've beaten everything? I guess we'll just uh, goof off for a couple hours till Pop's ready. Maybe go revive God, I don't know. Definitely God. I don't know who else it would be. Yeah, why don't we try to revive God? Good idea, Ira. I don't see how we could possibly screw this up. Definitely, definitely will not accidentally revive the Demon Lord. That'd be silly. Can you imagine the look on our faces if we did that? So we're not going to do that. We're going to revive God. Stomach, we might make a terrible mistake. Just everybody stand in front of your chairs. It looked a lot more like they were sitting before it rotated the camera. Disc 1 is broken, can you play Disc 2's content? No, you would need a save file. But if you need a Disc 1, I have four of them. Don't have to talk about why. to create the ultimate magic because he was angsty and uh, we're gonna talk to the queen here because we got the shrine where we need to revive God we've got the legendary dancer but we don't have the legendary tulip player we're gonna talk to princess or queen Michaela here and uh, ask her to hold a rock concert Find the best Tula player in the world, give them the Tula, the Terra Tula, if they can play it. And, um, this is a four and a half minute scene coming up. Yeah, second longest that I get in the room. She says, don't be impatient, these things take a while to set up, but if you just walk straight here, it's already set up, everybody's here. Good to go. You can see an old man that looks like Jan from the Camellia segment over on the left. I don't know if that's supposed to be him or not, but if he is, he's probably like 300 years old at this point. Because we've seen him in a past segment. And then we saw him in another past segment where he was super old. Now here we are again.
Every one of these guys have names? Dude was Petra. And another dude who looks just like him comes out and gets online. It probably won't be the guy with the unique sprite who ends up playing the Tula. for uh, defeating the Demon Lord just for important events like reviving the Loch Ness Monster earlier. And that one lady in the red dress throwing a torch into an erupting volcano. Those in the two God Revival scenes are really the only uh, FMVs in the game. There's some pre-rendered stuff in the end. I guess there's the FMB that opens the game, too. Yeah, it could very possibly be the guy named Johan who ends up being able to play the instrument. Nobody could play a note. Now the queen gets upset and declares that we need to just smash the Terratula into a thousand pieces. Take that cursed Tula and smash into pieces. if we can uh, opt to see his master before we go. Uh, we're not going to do that. I'll fly straight on over here.
that. To the younger lady. And just like we did in the Deja past. Gotta run through this cave, drain the water, yada yada. They sometimes use fishnet. Everybody ends up learning it during the final grind. Sometimes they use it against king metals, but everybody already has a stun ability. They don't need to learn fishnet. Leave me alone, big pig man. Killed the little pig. Chest repopulates. I didn't imagine that in it, is there? Ow. I got memed. But I didn't get memed. Cannon boxes of like 120 HP. Okay. Well, hot. Is finding a cannon box not reset your threat? That's a good question. They merge together and it's just there. Alright, now that we've placed the charm, there are no more monsters, as before. A couple of the chests in here do not repopulate in the present. Some do. What about these? Yeah, those are tied to the chests in the past. I don't know why that one specific chest turned into a can of box. Once again, issuing a warning for this cutscene coming up. If you have your eclipse glasses, you may want to get those handy. You aren't going to want to stare directly at this for too long. Yes. The innocent dress. Thank you. 
So this FMV is, it starts off identically to the original, except I think one of the two character models, uh, Johan's, is a little different. I think Ira is identical to Layla, though. She's dancing. Playing as Tula. Then around here, you start getting more of these extra little ghost shots. More particles. Tula's glowing. What are we doing? Who are we reviving? It's not the Demon Lord. We revived actual real god. Cool. Uh oh, dog needs help. You know it's god because his text is centered. His voice sounds exactly like Melvin's, though. I don't know, the dog just laid on my cord. Okay. That's fine. I can deal with having, like, a foot of cord. You know, I strongly considered buying a PS2 uh, controller, like, extension cable before this run, and I didn't. And I've had anxiety about the dog tripping over the cable the entire time. Now he's laying on it. Also, now we're here somehow. This is going to be really bad for my back leaning forward this far for the next two hours, two and a half, three hours. Man, this game doesn't end. We're only 20 minutes into this disc. Come on. Ah, we're still like 40 minutes away from the first boss. Fish festival time, or casting off, I guess. So we go here, talk to this very plot centric chef. It's not the only time you have to talk to this guy to progress the plot. Yeah, kind of. Huh. Why is that stove not symmetrical? some kind of party. For some reason we're cooking on the boat instead of somebody's house. I don't know. Oh, it's the fish festival song. Let me go talk to this old man up here. Dude, looks like Chrono, yeah. Toriyama art. Alright, he's gone. Mm -hmm. The old man tells us the king wants to see us. Sounds important.
So the king's gonna congratulate us for defeating the demon lord and reviving God, which are two things that we both definitely did. And, uh... Blah blah blah. Ask us what we're gonna do next. I don't know, fish I guess? And he also acknowledges that, uh, Ira, the relation of his, is like, great-great-granddaughter, technically. And invites her to live at the castle. And then the national anthem plays. And we get enough, another feast. Again. Time for post game. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, go give your father his lunch. This is how the game started. Fish sub for him. It's time to go fishing. Um, Arcano's like, alright, let's do it. Then the sailor comes up and says, hey, the king says that there's some people here from God. They want to talk to you, specifically Borcano. Borcano says, son, uh, I want to go fishing. Why don't you go talk to God for me? So, he's going to go fishing. See ya, dad. Some things are more important, you know. It's Maribel. We need to talk to Maribel's dad here. This lady's complaining about getting shoved out of the way while standing directly in the way. And quickly realizes, oh, I'm still in the way. Who moves? What an important quest trigger.
This is where we go upstairs and talk to the Baldi, okay. This is what I was thinking of when I talked to him earlier. Guard walks in and says, Hey, the king has a message for you. When you see the hero, report to me at once. Okay, I see the hero. He's right here. So we're gonna talk to the guard on the left. Finding out here that the these messengers from God are saying, hey, you know, it's been a month, we built God's temple, there were no issues with the foundation. Remember that for an hour and a half from now. There were no issues with the foundation of God's new temple. We just built it and it was fine. There's no basement, don't worry. Um and God is inviting most people over to see it. Fancy new triangle shaped building. And the messengers of God are like, why don't you come with us on our ship? Um You know, we'll, you, we got room on our boat for a king. And the king's like, I don't need your stupid boat. DQRTA here has a flying sky stone. I'm gonna ride that. It's like, okay, I wasn't volunteering the sky stone, but now I kinda have to. Here's Gabo. I don't know where he's been for the last 20 minutes, but here he is. <laughs> There's the basement in God's temple, exactly. Look at this. The entire temple. And that's all there is to it. I mean, if I was the king, and the hero is my subject, yeah, I'd, I would show up to God's party in the hero's skystone. I'm going to out the details on that later. Building's kind of obnoxious to navigate because the camera locks to 45 degree angles, but the building is constructed from 60 degree angles. So. Also, I'm just taking this stuff. That that soldier is really, really good at his job. I feel like you're not supposed to do that, but I did. Back 
and Ike. I do not know who Ike is. Ike is one of the nerd that was hanging out with the other nerd that we let into this King Slime Tower. somebody too. Somebody from one of the islands. There's a bunch of people here from the present islands. Like all the kings and such are here. Wait, no? No. Okay. In here then. One of these I think is a life knot. Wrong. 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 That's six tiny metals. Wrong. Didn't even know there was a tiny metal there. <sighs> Let me down. Okay. Now that we've rested, we can go up top. And see if we can go in now. There's somebody we know. But Melvin's got a problem he needs to deal with. And he's taking these guards with him. We'll see what that problem is in a minute. It's probably nothing serious. This is more than we have spoken with Melvin in the entire game to this point. So, alright, caught up. Melvin and Ira really don't have much dialogue. They come into the game way too late. In the first, like, three or four islands, uh, Maribel, Kiefer, and even Gabo talk about what's going on pretty frequently. But once you get further in than that, it's just kind of standard Dragon Quest where, you know, the characters don't really speak at all. Oops. I need to talk to these guys. In this room full of important people from all over the world, the right answer is to talk to these three goons that just don't have names and aren't important at all. And then try to leave. Then the big guy shows up. You might recall, like, six hours ago, I mentioned when we were leaving Dune <clears throat> that there's a scene that I didn't do where one of the queens of Dune gives you the evil eye from the evil statue. And, uh, even though that was never given to me, God's about to take it from me. So, eh. Why is Ragley here? There he goes. Which, to be fair, I don't know why that's still in my pocket. But it's been a month. This is the most alert and engaged I've ever been for this segment. Usually it's like 2 in the morning when I'm here. I also usually get more than 5 hours of sleep before starting this run. Oh look, Hondara, or Uncle. Uh, I don't know how he got to this island. That's the real question. I was supposed to say no, but I said yes, whatever. I'm sure it's just a few letters difference. <laughs> I 
have to let him borrow this guy's stone to not have to pay taxes. That's probably fair. Ding, alchemy pot's done. And again. Now something's going on here. Melvin's in trouble. Jumps off the tower. I believe he jumped right off. Once again, I have to explain that there is no fall damage in Dragon Quest, so Melvin's fine. Now something's happening on our flight back home. It would seem that our island of Estard is being sealed away like all of the other islands that we dealt with up to this point. So now we get to investigate that. So the king might have a concussion, but uh, it's fine. They'll take care of him. sat here through all my good bathroom breaks, didn't I? <laughs> I'm sure I won't regret that in an hour. Now that we have the final key, I'm gonna go in the basement and steal some stuff. Wrong. Wrong. Not that one. Seven tiny metals. I almost have enough to get a prize. I don't think that's true. I think you need like 35 to get a prize. Sorry, I'm being given food. leaving the castle, these soldiers are telling us there's actually monsters outside. So, now we know something's up. Say, don't leave the town, there's monsters. Monsters scary. So, what are we gonna do? The island's been sealed away, there's monsters. What is the first thing we do? Go to Maribel. <laughs> oh, wait. She not in here? <laughs> Did I miss something? Fish bell. Mirabelle's house. Oh, nope. She's in there. She's in there. I'm dumb. <laughs> there she is. <laughs> okay.
Maribel's back in the team. It's what we all been waiting for. Shut up, Maribel. We're working on it. Did you explore the whole island yet? No, Maribel, my nuts had to come here first. All these mountains, you're... I mean, I'd have to go out of my way to avoid you. Sheep duck. Sheep duck has to be on the list of Toriyama's weirdest monsters. And there's five of them. DQRGA. Is that you, DQRGA? It is I, Melvin. So Melvin takes this opportunity to reveal a new superpower that he has. He has the mind speak power, and he's had this the entire time. It's just not come up until now. He can use it to speak to us through this specific statue. It is unclear how long he has been sitting there trying to talk to us before we got within earshot of it. was inciting the incident at the beginning? Maybe. He's the one that wouldn't open the uh, door until we believed hard enough. Shout out to the world map. Still on the ground after all this time. to actually stand in this. Okay. Alright, who's ready for Melvin Quest? Nobody. Nobody's ready for Melvin Quest. By the way, it's the first time that I've been in uh, Present Coastal. <clears throat> I was thinking about this earlier, but the uh, all three of the castles that are associated with the four spirits, I do not go into them in the present until now. Not counting Estar, rather. But Dune Castle, I never go into because it pulls you into a three-minute cutscene. This one I don't go into until now. And, uh, Gorges, the town, I do not go into. Alright, I need to go. And I'm down to Halfling Town. Wow, no fights. Okay. Take that. Go down here because at this point, oops, went the wrong way again. I hate this. I hate how hard it is to see this. I just get tunnel vision following the path, and I don't see a fork in the road, so my mind doesn't tell me. Oh, go, go that way, you know? 
Hits me like 9 out of 10 times. I was so proud of myself for actually going the right way earlier. My first time down here. Then the second and third time I screwed it up. <laughs> I was saying something else, I don't know what. Oh, the reason I'm down here is that the King of Coastal, he thinks something's up with this god. So, he's hiding in Halfling Town here. For some reason, the first time you talk to him, he gives you a casino card. I assume he's supposed to give that to you in disc one, because this is weird. <laughs> and then he actually talks about stuff. Yeah, he says that, uh, <clears throat> he comments on uh, how the island seems to have been sealed away, coastal, as well as Estar, Dune, and Gorgeous. Gorgeous? Yeah, Gorgeous. Uh, it's one of these. Eh? Randy. Did I say no to the king? I better make sure. Yes, I did. Okay. Yeah, he asks how you feel about God, and if you say yes, yes I feel, then uh, he's, he doesn't want to talk to you. Melvin as God's best friend, except for that time that God didn't invite him to fight the Demon Lord. Uh, Melvin also thinks something's up with him. Really weird that God would steal away any of the islands. And also, why did he take the evil statue eyeballs? When we talk to the Queen of Dune later, she tells us that he took the one from her, too. And now we're doing this. Wait, why am I climbing the tower right now? Baby cloud. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know why. I don't know what happened to the fire that was in, um, Coastal, though. There was another beacon in Coastal. I don't know why we can't use that one. Alright, now we're gonna wait 12 seconds for this platform to get over here. I'm gonna stand up and stretch. Feels good. Oh, I haven't been stretching off in this run. All right. <laughs> yeah, I better stay away from the casino. I could... I could spend a minute in there. Get some Rainhawk hearts. And I didn't get any metal babbles in. Orgo 1 was pretty free. waiting in the lighthouse. Also, walking on these platforms with only one character is really awkward, because it still makes you stutter a little bit, but not so much that you're waiting on like an entire team of four people to walk up with Melvin. Put Melvin. Keep the helmet. Um, we're doing. Look to the beacon. I can't speak to my companions right now. What? I thought that was his whole thing. Right now, I'm speaking to my companions. <laughs> it turns out Melvin has another superpower. 
too, really. First of all, he can also speak to us directly while we're inside this building, for some reason. The statue's not anywhere near here, but hey, his mind speak power works here too. Uh, he can also teleport fire to us. Look at that, he lit the beacon. Um. Yeah, I don't know. I don't think they worked very hard on this section of the game. <laughs> I don't get it. Just Melvin things. We did get the ventricle scare back, just in time to sell it. Order, Greg, Gavo, Mirabelle. There is agility scare if goes to Mirabelle. Now disc two begins. We're through all those cutscenes. Um, so what we need to do now is we need to figure out how to revive all of the spirits. Oh my bad. Forgot about this dumb thing you have to do at the start. Remember 13 hours ago when we were at Ingao and I said this guy's still here in the disc two? Look, he's still here in disc two. And this guy swoops in. It's kind of funny, if you talk to that guy from below where the monster is, the monster will swoop in <clears throat> and you'll be stuck in its hitbox. You cannot walk away from it without talking to it and fighting it. Talk to her assistant. Um, I 
yeah, essentially at this point we're aware that of which four, you know, islands were sealed away. We know that they're all tied to those teleporters. And in Gao specifically, they have the idea to go and uh, talk to the flame spirit in the volcano. See if he can solve this. This preserver helmet. I don't know what it is. I'm gonna get rid of it. Hero staff. I need a little more captain hat. Actually, no, we haven't could equip that. Right. No, he's got the Viking helmet. Can sell it. Wait, no, buy it. Purchase. Oh, do I not? How much does it cost? Oh, 16, eh? All well, the things that told me to sell. Windy, I guess. This place is tagged as a... Um... Yeah. There's an item shop. I can try to buy, you know, nine of each if I want. No, I don't have enough for that, you're right. It'd be good enough. talk to this guy here and he'll let us in the volcano so that we can look for the fire spirit but if we talk to him twice then a stupid friend falls in the volcano and we can go that way Fourteen hours ago, we were here. You went with the the boss in that room right there. The flame giant this is the guy that fell in the volcano. He's fine. Don't worry. There's no fall damage in Dragon Quest. Obnoxious. If you get too close to the fire jets, you take some damage, but it's difficult to tell when they are and are not active. Heal on that thing. I think we were fully healed, though. The only treasure chest in here that we really want is this guy over here. Drink. World Doom. Didn't figure we'd get through this one on fight. There's two bosses, by the way. <laughs> recolors, but... Two boss recolors and a gold slime. Alright. That was a pretty clean walk down here. That was only one encounter. That's cool.
Oh, I got a big cutscene coming up in like 20 minutes, okay. Pamela had her assistant bring something called the Flame Aqua. I'm not really sure why we couldn't have just looked for it before we left. Um, anything I need to do before this fight? I don't think so. Let's do it. <clears throat> Alright. So the fire spirit here is very weak. Need some juice, but that's what the Flame Aqua is for. Check that in there. And then, completely unique and original Toriyama character coming at ya. Doesn't look like anything he's done before. Flame Spirit, here he is. Iconic. Very similar to uh, Bellomar. Bellomar? Bellomar? The guy we fought at the top of the lighthouse with the baby monsters, monster babies. Can I do damage? If he did, I don't know who yet. This is his big attack. Because you got enough HP to survive that, you're good. Maribel obviously does not have enough HP to survive that. She's not good. Nobody ever said she was. Oops. Ow. Okay. Uh, heal. Or dance berry. Up 5,000 HP. Um, if you consider each of Organomir's phases to be individual monsters, then this is the monster with the most HP that we will fight in this round. Though uh, the final phase of Organomir regenerates, so ultimately that phase has more HP than this one. what he's doing when I'm not paying attention and I don't see who he damaged. Can he resap yet? <clears throat> yes. Worked on it, didn't hit anybody, that's great. And he's just alternating between like scorching and spitting a fireball. His biggest AoE and his biggest single target move. That's when he's obnoxious, but you know, he's doing this stuff. This is perfectly comfy. Yeah, that was that was a really good fight. <clears throat> yeah. 
Yeah, that's a good point. That's right. It wasn't really animated, was it? This kind of wiggles, kind of like the DQM PS1 sprites. Flame Spirit tries to bring light back to Indian. He is not able to by himself, though. He proposes that we wake up the other three spirits as well. He gives us the Flame Charm. That's one of the four down. Technically two out of four. <clears throat> if you just want to check off Water Spirit early. sure before I do that uh, it takes a while to walk out of here can I not walk out of there that way is the wall really intact over there okay keep me alone back to Fishbell, there's some more hubbub going on here. The lady who was in the way is in the way again. Out of the way. Is that just her thing, being in people's way? You go down to the dock. Uh, talk to your, our mother here. Investigating a big frozen ship out on the sea. It's gonna end up being Shark Eye's ship, <clears throat> which um, the Flame Spirit just uh, unfroze for us. So, this is that trail of fire that he was leaving when we saw him flying away from the shrine, leading us to Shark Eye's ship. We're gonna go there, meet Captain Shark Eye, and buy some stuff from. Uh, Merchants on this belt. Hey, pop things again for the GLHF. <laughs> I'm 
Pop's perspective, it was yesterday the last time he popped in here and said that. <laughs> Ugh, we're getting there. We got about two more hours left. Alright. I'm gonna go get fresh water. I'm going to adjust my setup a little bit here. I don't think this is the end of it. You wake up in this bed twice. Adjusted my setup so that I can scratch the dog for a minute. I haven't given him any attention all day. I've been playing video games for 15 and a half straight hours. How dare I? happening in this cutscene is I am throwing the pig and the dog is not bringing it back. So, um... Oh, also, there's some stuff with Shirakai and the hero. So it turns out Shirakai had half a tattoo and the hero had half a tattoo. And when you show up and you have the super sword, uh, the tattoos combine. Shoutouts to the world map still sitting on the floor, by the way. 
I'll, I'll pick it up later. I, I don't need it. I, don't, I know where I'm going. <laughs> this also unseals the Aqua Spirit. Disconnect from... I'm not falling asleep. I made it here the first 15 hours by myself. I'll write it out. Okay. Alright, here's the actual end of the cutscene. Um, yeah, we, we meet Shark Eye, we get to connect with our actual dad, um, that's what I'm looking for. I think I need a little extra money. I don't like that I was short when I was buying the water flying clothes. Hey, fetch the pig, fetch it. It's behind you. Here, talk to this guy. <clears throat> Guy's gonna drop us off over here. I don't know where over here is, but it's not Fishbell, and I want to be at Fishbell. Oops, I want to go up the high road. I'm trying to grab the pig. Making movement mistakes while I'm trying to play with the dog. Becomes part of doing an 18 hour speedrun when you have a dog, though, is making sure you give at least a little attention to the dog. But he doesn't feel completely left. Hey, hey! Don't give me the pig. Okay. <laughs> it's not the right. There's a farmer's den. Where, where am I? Is there a door on this level? Oh, this. This is what I wanted. Okay. Anyway. It's you, right? You got the good stuff? No. The other one. This one. Alright. I'm to sell... Look at this. I'm gonna sell the King Sword. Ira has equipped. Trying to get 35,000 buckaroos for a gigant armor. We should be able to afford. Alright, the lava staff. Only 2,500 to go. There's most of it. Captain and pirate shirts that I picked up. Okay. No. No. Don't sell that. Okay. Don't sell the wizard ring. I think the dragon robe might actually be. Oh, but that's. Yeah, I really can't use it. There was a point where I'd considered buying the dragon robe for Hero if I could get like a crazy amount of lucky panel money or something. Reorder. Walk 
back for the last time ever in this direction. the pedestals. The portal room. In the ruin. We're not being good at pet trap. More sheep ducks. Never have I had a DQ7 speedrun that featured more sheep duck than this one. Next we're going to go for the Earth Spirit. This section drags a little bit. Uh, whatever. Oh, castle first. has been awaiting our return, not that we've ever been here in the present. But the game assumes that we have at this point. How do I run this without webcam? Is that the answer to how do I run this? It is much easier to run it without a webcam for sure. It's very hard to sit in frame for 18 straight hours and not like slouch heavily, like throw up my legs on my desk, anything like that. treat for the dog real quick. Steel, well, that's certainly not the case. As I sort of just demonstrated, there's a lot of conversations in this game where I can just walk away and not lose any time. I assume I did lose time there, but not much. That one was special. The dog was not going to wait. You can't tell him, okay, I'll get you a treat when I have a long cutscene. <laughs> I 
Oh yeah, speaking of time passing in the areas, if you pay attention in Dune, it's actually kind of cool that in the past they had all these walls up around the city, but in the present those walls are all buried in sand. They're only sticking out of the ground like a foot or two. It's part of why the town looks so different. So, you know, 100 hour RPG finds time for these three characters. Um, <laughs> so the Queen of Dune told us we need to awaken the Earth Spirit and only the Shaman in the, uh, you know, the Village of Dune knows how to do that. So... I think I was supposed to talk to him before doing this. I don't know. So yeah, that's why we went to the village. But the queen also told us, hey, while you're trying to figure this out, you're going to need some help. The, the whatever, village elder, village chief has four brave sons. Take one of them with you. I don't know where the other three brave sons are, but we got this one. She could have been talking about those three guys at the table there. <clears throat> so this guy... Just fishing in the sand. Tell him where the, ask him where the Terra Spirit is. He's like, oh yeah, the dude's everywhere. Apparently all you gotta do is draw a picture of him in the sand and he'll be summoned. So that's easy. We'll be on our way to the Wind Spirit in no time. Oops. Almost didn't see him there. There you can see the fences. Just barely poking out of the ground. Throat of steel, throat of steel I'll give you. My throat was feeling scratchy a couple hours in, and somehow I've made it this whole way. Probably gonna feel it tomorrow. I haven't felt it in a while, though. I don't know. Does the game have a Charmels before now? Hmm. What other Charmels is are there in this game? He started drawing a picture of the Earth Spirit, and then he forgot how to draw the face. But I can't blame him. Faces are hard. So, we're out of ideas. Let's go back to the Queen and tell her we failed. face. Queen says, I don't know, check the basement. Maybe something down there will help. She's really grasping at straws. But we do end up finding something. We also find these three morons. Again. The chief's other three sons. Haha, <laughs> I found this thing. I think it's important. <laughs> you won't see any monsters with us around. <laughs> I beat you to it, Saeed. Wow. Brother found it before you did. Boom. Suddenly. Monsters! Ah, Saeed, help us! Alright, oh, talk to the monster, not the dude. 
That makes sense. So these guys are glorified random encounters. They have a ton of HP, but that's it. I could easily fight an encounter of five of these guys. Why does Hero have no HP? I'll do something about that. Said. You saved me first because I'm your favorite, right? Back here. This guy can be annoying and cast bounce, which stops me from tapping him. But he got barked, so he's not going to do that. Will, will. Also dancing. Let's have Gabo parry the fishes dancing. Wiggle, wiggle. Falcon cut. Thanks, very much. Now stop talking to them. That's what the strategy is for this fight. Oh, it's exactly the same. <laughs> Two sword dances, bark and snap. quote bosses from the earth section but we've still got like 20 minutes to go <laughs> so yeah these chumps are like okay well thank thanks uh we'll we'll give you the key but on one condition you have to not be the chief and Saeed's like I don't want to be the chief and the entire team is sitting here like oh god Saeed you need to be the chief do not let one of these people rule your people. <clears throat> but that's their problem. <laughs> What's up, whiny pup? Back to the queen. So we found a random key in the basement, and we seem to think that this is going to help us with the specific problem that we are facing at this moment. We have no reason to believe this, but... She recognizes that. Oops. It says we gotta go to the Sphinx now. <clears throat> This is honestly somewhere you could get stuck playing casually. Um. Because you might not know how to get to the Sphinx. You would most likely have figured it out. 
Because you had to go in the giant pot to talk to the dude that forgot how to draw the face. Zero damage, thanks. Maybe he cast ice beam? What are these monsters doing to me right now? Another fight? Exactly against the building? Go down the pot. But yeah, you have to step in here. Because for absolutely no reason, there's a teleporter from this pot to the Sphinx. Again, disc two. I don't know. There's some laziness in disc two. Okay. So we showed this lady that we've got the king's key. Let's us in here. lead us. How are we going to save Egypt? Well, of course, we're going to use the Millennium Puzzle. <laughs> are we going to get a fight on this floor? Yeah. It's toads. Great, we're all poison. Cool. I don't want to put up with this flashing the whole time. I only have three antidotes. I don't want to have to buy more. I'm going to want to have some for Oreo to me. There's a couple puzzles in this dungeon. They're really not complicated. So, to remind the guy how to draw the face of the Earth Spirit, Terra Spirit, we need four things. We need a reminder of what his eyes look like, his mouth, his nose, and his ears. Close all these rooms. Ah, for all these uh, caskets that have torches in them. Room gets dark. Eyes emoji. One out of four. This puzzle, very difficult. You must stare at the face in the wall until it gets hungry. A mouth gem. A Rouge gem. I don't know why it's called that. Oh. 
evil vulgar. I don't know what they were going with with that name. There's a fork here. Hard gem. The puzzle on that is that you need to use it. There's a crack in the middle. Do we want to break it in half? Boom. Now it looks like two ears. Easy peasy. Now for the nose. I forget I have an NPC with me, so do the bad guys. They're not targeting him. Alright, the nose. There's no puzzle for the nose. There, we got the nose, Jim. Let's get out of here. We can't get out of here. Let's get out of here. Alright, let's go save Egypt. See, this is why I don't have a webcam. See? Or I mean, not that. Alright, we've completed the face. Phew. Seems about a minute and a half long. Not much to say about it. He's summoning the terror spirit. The fire spirit's the only one of the four that we have to fight here. A while back I mentioned, because uh, someone was asking about 100%, I mentioned there's a four spirits RTA, Japanese category. Nobody, to my knowledge, has run it in English, but uh, the boss of the second bonus dungeon, post-game dungeon, is all four of the spirits. I think the fire spirit is just pasted in there from his normal disc 2 fight. So you're basically fighting four enemies that are as strong as that boss fight. But it's still a lot easier than fighting... Uh, than what you have to do to unlock that dungeon. straight across. Go handle the wind spirit. <clears throat> this is a bit shorter than the other two segments. We've still got a bit of an engine to crawl through. Well, hopefully it's short. There's a big potential for time loss in this segment if I die to the boss. I think I have to walk all the way through here. I don't think I can just like cast outside or anything. But I want to grab the world do I forgot anyway. I'm gonna do that. Right here.
Still out of world do. We get four world dues in this run. We want all of them for the final boss. I need to use one in an emergency, I might, but at this point there's not really anything to put me in that kind of an emergency. Is there only one boss before the final boss? I think so. Just Nengle. And he could kill one of my characters, but he's not likely to put me in a situation where I want to use a world do. Okay. I head to the Pendragon's house. <clears throat> Bunch of people standing out here. Gonna be a cutscene here. So, you'll remember when we were here in the past, there was a little girl that did not have wings. In the present, nobody here has wings. Except today. What's her name? Tell me her name. What's her face? This lady. She has wings. The fauna. I knew it was three syllables, but I was not going to come up with a three syllable name. <laughs> Yeah, she just woke up like this. Um, we'll find out why in a minute. We're gonna go talk to her, see what she knows about waking up the wind spirit. And she will join us, and we will go do that. Um, essentially all we gotta do is get a dress and put it on a statue. But that dress is two dungeons deep. Moving that guy out of the way saves a couple frames, because if you have Safana with you, he will talk longer. <clears throat> will one of this game rank among DQ villains? Probably depends on what you're scoring them on. As far as like uh, how cool of a boss fight it is in a speedrun, I'd say he's very high up there. The main problem with them is that you have to play the other 17 hours of the game to get to them. <clears throat> it's not the most complex boss fight in the series. I might put him like third place though, I don't know. His death more is definitely probably number one. Then some version of Necrosaro maybe. Then maybe Orgo? Orgo's got four phases. They do like to murder you. I think he goes up there. But as far as like, coolness of the boss, or like, how involved the boss is with the story... Ow! Actually, he's pretty involved with the story compared to most Dragon Quest final bosses. A lot of them just kind of show up. Or like, the king tells you about them at the start of the game, they don't actually do anything all game. But, I don't know, you fight them because they're evil. The demon lord actually kind of has a presence in this game. You don't see him until the end of disc 1, but... His minions are all over the place. They're actively destroying towns and you're showing up to stop them. Yeah, if we're talking about, like, lore strength, I'd put him up there, too, as well. <clears throat> He's not just a powerful wizard like half the DQ bosses are. He actually defeated God, or at least got him to go on vacation. I'm not really sure. It's not entirely clear. He was defeated, but then we revived him. But then we didn't actually revive him, we revived the Demon Lord instead. But then he's still there because he's in the bonus dungeon. 
I don't know. afford that. I don't want to fight these. Oh, yeah. oh, there we go. Ultra hit. That's exactly what I wanted to see. <laughs> yeah, with the axe missed too. Like those guys? What up, Miracle Sword? You can get a Miracle Sword in this game for like 65 small medals, but, uh, tch. you barely have 65 small medals by this point in the game. If you collect them all. And by collect them all, I mean like, farm the immigrant town right away. I'm pretty sure you can't get 65 small medals in disc 1. I looked into it because of my solo hero routing. Control <laughs> sitting in the bonus dungeon. Yeah, pretty much. I kind of get the impression that, like, Orgo Demir beat him up, and, you know, he didn't die, but he's just like, you know what? I'm just gonna sit the next couple centuries out. Not because I'm wounded, but because I just don't feel it right now. <laughs> Oops. This room. This room can be a little obnoxious with the physics. As you climb up these two dimensional ladders, and then you gotta jump off these three dimensional platforms. Looks like I got it though. Sometimes you'll try to jump off the side there, and your character will just grab the ladder. <laughs> Alright. So, we're gonna get some more lore here. We've approached the wind altar. All this wind is happening. Who's gonna show up? Her name's not Amy. No, I can't. No, I'm not gonna. I shouldn't have said that. Yeah, it's it's you. Yeah, I I I know you. It's it's her from before without the wings. So uh, yeah, the theory is that she didn't get her wings. Now, a couple centuries later, the wings that would have been hers are going to Safana. I'm not gonna talk about it, I'm just completely spacing on her name again. I'll just call her Amy again. Ready for 3D Maze Cube World? Well, that's great, because it is time for 3D Maze Cube World as soon as I'm done picking up this guy's room for him. I just did this before the stream started. Clean up your own room. Where is it? I rotated the camera back because I was sure I wouldn't lose it. is ready for one of the most frustrating <clears throat> Dragon Quest dungeons, period, just by pure design, ignoring what monsters are in it. Still probably not as bad as the Road to Rome. Uh, yeah. Be heading into such a dungeon in just a moment. I might use the end first.
Controller cable. Don't want to pull in the console off. All right. Here we go. Ah, camera moved. Beyond the Dark Prince. Well, how about this? <laughs> that room isn't bad. This room's really not either once you figure out what you're doing. The real problem is that you just can't move the camera around to see everything. You can only move the camera on one axis. This room is awful. Not to my knowledge. Hey, where'd my Maribel go? Bring her back. Bad dogs, try again. Yeah. To learn how to get through here, I had to 3D model this entire room because watching a video of it was just not giving me a good sense of where I was and where I needed to be. This room's just the boss room. I might find a boss on the, or a random encounter on the way there, though. Maybe not. Okay. I should just use magic. What do I got these things for if I'm not going to use them? For this, I have Mystic Notes, Gamma, I should have used them before I used the end, but I didn't. Um, Terra Charm. Hero. Defense Seed, Maribel. Ability Seed, not Maribel. Gamma. Uh, where's the party order? Here we go. This is the chest where the dress is supposed to be. It's empty. And then this dude shows up. He's like, what are you looking for? Robe? My robe? He's not going to give it up. Alright, so much like... Dharma Segment. Maribel's just going to parry every single turn. Wow, cool. Great spread. Ow. 
now. one of us. scenario that that wouldn't happen. Two hits on each character. Two hits on two different characters, rather. Seven hundred HP total. I don't know how much I built for him. I think I was going to be worrying about turn. Oh, I can't. All right. He got too much defense power. so bad. Again, wiping to that fight is terrible. You go all the way back to the... S well, you're gonna see when I death warp. But you go all the way back to where I entered Gorgeous from the teleporter. So you have to walk from the Fane through Gorgeous 
Do the tower. You can skip the tower. Um, and you don't have to clean up the guy's room again, but you do have to go through this maze again. Alright. Maribel still has the chain whip? <laughs> I get what doesn't need any whip. I mean, that's why I was short on money at one point. This is not the monster that we're gonna die to. That's her try. Death warrant. I don't care, she can keep the whip. Spirit, all we gotta do is put the dress on the statue out here. Oops. I was supposed to tidy all earlier. Okay, I'll try to do that after this. Alright, so here's the wind spirit. He's gonna help us out, but she's got some demands. Five-year supply of cute guys. Five years worth of nothing but able-bodied, attractive men. Get pretty tired of things pretty easily, especially men. Can't promise me that? I'm sorry. Can't do much for you. I'm not the only spirit around. I can't cut it. Gotta go to one of the others. Alright. So we tell her we've already talked to them, and then she... Get serious for a minute. Then she makes a joke about being your little slave girl. Then she's off to go help the others. Alright, we've got all of the, uh... All the spirits woken up. All right, yeah. All right, I'm gonna tidy. Junk. Now we go back to the ancient fane. Okay, I have died on this walk before because I do it with just hero alive. Downside of doing that death warp. But it's okay.
Okay, um... I think we do have to actually walk out of here. Yeah, we do. <clears throat> okay. We just have to walk from the Fane back to Fishbell, and then we will get the Aqua Spirit in the next cutscene. The four spirits will join forces to uh, confront God, the what his deal is. Then <sighs> we can go to the final dungeon. Oops. Here we go. Those emptitudes are not good for business. God, what's your deal? PB. <laughs> That's a fish belt area. Okay, so here comes a three and a half minute cutscene. This is the last cutscene I'm gonna get, so I'm gonna stand up and stretch again. Um, yeah, I pretty much already explained what's gonna happen here. The Aqua Spirit was in that pool all along where we got the, what was it, the Rainbow Dew. How long ago? 15 hours ago? Alright. Spirits are here to confront God. They're trying to figure out what his deal is. God shows up. I don't know, they all yell at each other. Surely the god that we revived would not be so cruel. Oh no! We accidentally revived the demon lord instead of god. Oh. Oh my goodness. Oh. Oh, if only I could see the look on my face. Dang, I'm so embarrassed. That's... Ah. Uh, I must have had the instructions upside down. Oh no. I'm gonna have to go take care of that. That's my bad. Yeah. Also, that perfectly normal foundation underneath the, uh, the God Shrine, yeah, that was a lie too. They built it on top of this. Such a klutz. Ah, so careless. Get off my corpse. 
cord now. Standing on my cord, thank you. Okay. agility as we can get them. Oh, the water charm. I was just given. Ira. Here we get the flame charm. Carpet we're done with. Deer's blessed staff. The water robe out of here. White shield. All of the wizard rings go to Gabo. Interest. Miracle sword goes to Melvin. I don't think it does right now. Hold on. Uh, time sand is in here. That needs to get a gamma. They just sort of... good for now. Anything else we need we can do later. Okay. Use the sky stone to enter the dungeon here. Oh, I went the long way. My bad. Oh well. We should just cast outside. to fall off the side. If you fall off the side, then you land. Oh no, the foundation wasn't stable at all. Look at this big hole. Okay, down we go. Poison, whatever. Negligible damage. Nice, no encounter in that room. Uh, if we shove these statues, it opens the front door. So that gives us a shortcut to get in here more quickly. 
You don't have to take this guy's down into the top anymore. And now we go down into the real dungeon. Okay. So here's this room. We get eaten by this thing. <clears throat> Open the thing. Another world leaf. I'm gonna give that to Melvin as well. Alright. So this room here is gonna be the room where we farm for King Metals. These eggs. I'm gonna do it on the second pass, not the first. But I mean, if they just wanna say hello. Oh, it ran away. They do not run away very often. <laughs> no. so they call for help. Do -do 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 -do. And then I need to look at my notes to what tactics do I use. Slash bark. skills because they can be stacked but they aren't doing it when the first one hits all right easy peasy as one i want to kill three two is enough but three is comfier Yeah, this is just going through on my first pass, and I, I opened three eggs, and I found three medallies. I flee because I don't want to do anything to them on the first turn. Okay, well, we've already killed two. Maybe I just go with two. I still want to pick up the armor, though. Is PB back on the table if I just go for it? I would have to fight Orgo with just the sword for PB to be on the table, and I don't want to do that. played across the whole world, all games at all time. Yeah. And how much time has been spent playing them. <clears throat> what? Ew. 
The actual random encounters in this place are awful. So just for the record, all of those eggs get you into effectively a random encounter with only one enemy. Um, and it just so happened that it picked Metal ES for me on three out of three eggs. <laughs> kind of crazy, and I kind of don't want to look for a third king anymore. Um... But yeah, the, the King Metals are so susceptible to those lose-a-turn skills that if you if the Metal ES does not run turn one, you're almost guaranteed to kill it. Unless three lose-a-turn skills fail in a row, which happened to me in my PB. I was really salty about it. Uh, Flame Charm, yeah. So there's four paths that you can take from here. I'm gonna take all three except for when. I want the Fuego Helm. Boss fight is very scary without this. Oh, she didn't have a helmet. Okay. <laughs> that might have been why she was taking so much damage against. Nimble. Just immediately go in again. Let's not go save first. Yeah, I'm not getting another king. This two came too fast. I'm in a good mood. I'm feeling optimistic. Flirt me. Thank you. Instead of upright. That's why. flying instead of casting return. I don't know. Okay, is 
Is there anything else I want to do? Merman, Era. time from this guy, but that's fine. Keep selling your copper swords, man. Alright, save the game. This is like the third time I've saved the game. Saved. I think Rainmaker was the first save. Evil Mac was the first save, then Rainmaker. One save in Dharma, two saves in Dharma. I think only one. Yeah, I don't think I saved before the tournament. Maybe I did. No, I did. I did. Yeah. Actually, I had to reset in the tournament. Why am I flying instead of... Oh, wait, no. I can't return to this. No. That's the fourth time I've saved, I think. Fifth? I don't know. I'm not saving often, is the point. <laughs> okay. Got everything sorted except for the sword. Blurp. If I've ever fought this guy with two king medals in DQRT Marathon. I don't know if I've ever fought him with two medals on stream. We're about to. It's not a huge difference, it's like 15 HP on every character. Which can matter, it probably will matter. I'm sure at some point somebody will die by less than 15 damage. But I also have four world leaves. Which is crazy. Let's figure this out. Aqua Charm. Part of the fight, if any, do I need notes for? I don't know. Probably 2 2. Cycle. I know his cycle, but I like to look at it. I feel more comfortable. <clears throat> there it goes. One encounter in this room isn't bad. Somebody tell Darko this was here. <laughs> I hope so. Yep. 
Yoshi and S sword. Alright. 124 attack to heroes. 247. Pretty even. Party's completely healed before we step in here. Archer's Mirror Phase 1. One action per round only. 3500 HP. Picks randomly between six different moves. Five different moves. One must take up two slots. I'm just gonna hold up and run straight into him. We're not gonna hesitate on menuing. I'm gonna look over our inventory to make sure we've got everything. As I was saying that, I was like, does Melvin have the Bound Sword and does Ira have the Mermaid? Nope. Don't worry about it. You probably do. Probably right. Okay, manual tactics. Dance. Am I in the right party order? No. Okay, well, we're gonna deal with this party order. That's fine. Party order is not a huge deal, but it would have been nice if Ira was in front. Sword up before this phase dies. But I need help. Uh, I need Melvin that really. Well, like. Okay. That work. 
works. That works. Um, do you not have... Oh, yeah, you do. said exactly what I thought he said. <laughs> Alright. That's cool. <laughs> okay, um... Pink Guardian. staff. I don't need to target the plus staff if Melvin is guardianing, but it makes me feel better. I'll buy in the transition here next. Um, this is usually a do turn. I don't think it needs to be. You, world do. Like, this is usually the double do turn. You just parry, Melvin. Don't bite your head asleep. Fine. Do all the damage you want. And that's it for Melvin. Okay. Wasn't even worried. Uh, who dance? I have a wizard ring. And I wake up Ira. Nice wizard green gamma. Everything you touch turns to dust. I wasn't paying attention. What did he just do? He must have done the energy balls, so it's time for bounce. Yep, my spirit punch. Melvin or Gabo doesn't have a world leaf. So that's what it's only gonna hit three times. Right. Uh, Melvin's gonna guardian. Yeah. What happened to Exploda? Ooh, he skipped it because I had. He was only gonna hit two and reflect once. Okay. Ugh, that's nasty when that happens. Oh shoot, I didn't control Melvin. 
we're in trouble next turn. Oh good, he switched. Whatever. This is not good, but it's never good. It's not good, which means it's going well. cry. You can see it does single digit damage instead of 140 damage. Okay. That physical attack that he just did has a 50% chance to confuse. And is the reason that Ira is supposed to be in front. Put Melvin on heal. That will kill Gabo. Two HP. One Thank you. We can do it again this turn. This guy has one or two actions per turn. He's got three. He's on a three attack cycle that he switches between, but each attack he picks between two different things he can do. I'm gonna heal us. Am I? I won't kill everyone, but it'll probably kill one person. If he heaves. Okay, we need to action. He does his next action. Phase only has 3,000 HP, it's got pretty low defense power as well, and um, it does regenerate 20 HP per turn, but it's still the lowest health of the phases, though it doesn't kill itself like phase 2. Okay. But he should still be able to kill us. We've been pouring on damage this whole time. And when we're out of this phase, it gets a lot comfier. Okay, he's being really nice. He's not taking two actions, like hardly ever. Okay, phase four. Good. As long as he doesn't just sit in his A pattern, we're okay. That's really all that can ruin this. Get him, get him out I dare you to lick that. $50 if you lick that. Paralyzed, thank you. Great. Okay, he's in B pattern now. Like, time to fix the paralysis. Just do that. Lick it, Melvin. Lick it. Lick the melty candy bar. Don't do that. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. Let me help you. on Orgodomir? I don't want that to happen. Magic wall, schmagic wall. 
seen Melbourne looking through that before. It's not meditating. Yeah, this is the final phase. 4,500 total HP, but he regenerates 50 per turn. This is Mega Magic, it's expected, I'm not worried about this. a smug face during the final boss fight, but he's thinking it. Oh, I actually let Melvin die on purpose to get rid of his bounce so he can heal him and heal us? Okay. This is actually a high-level strategy. Alright. Oh, straight to C phase, huh? Just skipping B entirely. Straight to C. Okay. I don't care, I'm at full HP. At least he didn't do another AoE first, or that would have been a wipe. That is the only risk in, uh, in this phase, really. What am I doing? Like him. Pick flip. Look at that defense power. He'll probably die soon. He usually dies before the end of the second time through the C phase. And he did not spend very long in pattern, which is his stall pattern, the first time around, and he skipped it the second time. That's the phase where he meditates a little bit. I don't know. He's probably got a few rounds left, though. I missed his waves, didn't I? Is he gonna cast like this turn? Yeah, it's like a 1 in 9 for it to land. It might be even worse while he has Magic Wall up, but there's really nothing better for Melvin to do right now. 
I do. Eleven. Can we kill him as Eleven doesn't die again? Okay, that's fine. I did it. No. Oh, sweet. Be better than again. He will probably die before this pattern ends. Before he goes back to doing damage. There he goes. Alright. That was a really good run for, like, marathon run. There were some hiccups in the beginning, but, like, after Dharma, it went very smoothly. I don't know if I did anything after Dharma. Hmm. I know I made quite a few mistakes along the way. I'm pretty surprised that this is only seven minutes worse than my last run. Meaning this is the second best run I've ever done in this game. But that's only out of like 10 completed runs, to be fair. I don't know what my total is at right now. I'm going to go downstairs, right? So this guy... Let's <laughs> save 17 hours with Anime Maker, true. I mean, I've got a SD card with a, or a, a PlayStation memory card with an SD card in it. There's all sorts of ways I could hack in a completed file. Or an Orgo Demir file. Maybe that's not as fun, though. <laughs> Alright. Uh, and I failed to find somebody to restream the next run, so I get to do that. Boom, 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 boom. All right. I'm not going to be commentating for it, though. I'll be behind the scenes. Half asleep on the couch. <laughs> this is a good run, though. I'm happy with this. I could definitely get some more PBs if I wanted to dedicate more Saturdays to this. I don't know if I'm going to right now, though. I was kind of saying this earlier, but like around like February, I was really getting an urge to play this game, but I was stuck in a bunch of casual games that I wanted to clear out of the way first. But <laughs> and then now that I've got the time, I'm not feeling it as much as I was before. Completely skip that lady. Nestor will pick up on Discord if you just call him if the stream goes down. <laughs> I mentioned this earlier, like, half-jokingly, but, um... When I put my estimate for this game on the calendar, I was thinking that 18 hours was what I estimated the last two times I did this. But it was actually 19 hours? <laughs> so... I'm glad my D-Rest went well, well enough that today I was actually pretty confident I would be under 18 hours. I figured worst case I'd just have to cut the credits, but we're gonna get the credits and still be half hour under. <laughs> my other run as well. Yeah, the, the, both of the runs that I put in the, the schedule for myself, uh, I may have done so without confirming how long the game actually was. The Monsters 1 PS1 I'm actually bad at, so that might actually take three hours. 
I got in pretty hard in the D restaurant for that. But I did learn from getting owned, so we'll see. Astonished it's only 18 hours, yeah. That's very fair. A very fair reaction for someone to have who's played the game before. And we really don't skip much in this run. Like I said, there's one uh, skip that skips like six minutes of the game. Skips half a Probina. Uh, besides that, we kind of just play the game. We complete all 18 of the islands. I don't know if that's true. I think I got past the hard ones. Yeah, I, I think I did. <clears throat> Left work and slept when I began, and now you're back at work. Nice. Yeah, my brother got up about three hours into the run, went to work, came back around and started disc two. It was a little later than that. It was 12 hours ago that he launched. I talked to her. already live. Prop while we're in the credits then. Uh, we need to talk to... Okay. that horn hat guy ever got to be first after we cut in line <laughs> yeah I was commenting on that much earlier in the run actually that like this game came out in an era where if your game wasn't in 3d most people wouldn't even look at it right like oh a sprite game what is this the Super Nintendo but this is also, like, one of the better-looking spray games that came out so late. Kind of like how all the late NES games are as good, if not better, than some of the launch titles for the SNES. Yeah, we're just gonna... we're just gonna leave her alone. Queen asks us if we want to go in the basement for a makeout session, we just walk out the door. Sorry, ma'am. Speed running. Probably want to get back from fishing. No, Anatello, we gotta go fishing. Remember, priorities. Just like Dad taught us. Alright, here's the trigger for this one. Alright, and we're out. <laughs> I think that one's my favorite. I assume the tr trigger is just to talk to literally anybody, but he's the closest and he says the least. <laughs> yeah, the ending is really dense if you only talk to the minimum people you need to talk to. Alright, I've got a minute here. 
here before I need to do anything else. Oops. QRTA. Yes, Maribel, I was fine without you. I just turned down a queen. Get out of my party. Don't act like you belong here. Two fish subs. I'm finally recognized as a man, man enough to go fishing. All I had to do <laughs> was defeat the demon lord twice. I defeated the demon lord, that wasn't enough. Dad still wouldn't let me go on fishing with him. So I resurrected the demon lord and I beat him again. And now, finally, he can he'll let me go fishing. And for some reason, they let Maribel come, too. I don't know. I don't know why. I don't know. to the top and that's controller down. Big GG. Time for the credit sequence. Blech. Um gonna let this play out. I'm gonna finish setting up the stream for the next run. And uh yeah thanks everyone for watching. Been pretty cool playing this giant stupidly long game. And a lot of people popping in here who are, uh, haven't seemed to have seen the run before, so it's always cool showing off a run to people who are new to it. Pretty much why we put this whole event on. Ugh. And, yeah, um, enjoy these 
these credits, I will probably pop back into transition games, but I am going to go finish the setup. Thanks again for watching, and stay tuned for the rest of the weekend, because we got plenty more games coming up. Uh, next is going to be Pop doing a Roto Relay Super Famicom Dragon Quest 1, 2, 3, uh, starting as soon as these credits are over.
All right. Got that final message from Kiefer there. I'm going to throw it over to the intermission screen. I need a second to sort out audio because I don't have audio balance for this other scene yet. But uh, as soon as that's good, I'll throw it over to Pop. And yeah, so DQ Roto Relay coming up probably within 5 10 minutes. So stay tuned. I forgot I still have that transition active. 